Will the meeting please come to order? Welcome to the Metro Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by our own Council Member Brenda Haywood. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Would you please join me in bowing your heads? Heavenly Father, we lift you up, we glorify, and we magnify your holy name. We surrender our lives to you. We surrender our decisions to you as we attempt to lead and guide our wonderful city. What an awesome difference it is when you are in control. Heavenly Father, please change that which is in need of change and fill that up which is empty. Heavenly Father, please meet our every need. When we face difficult decisions, we can face them under your guidance with great confidence, boldness, and assurance. And we embrace your, as we embrace your grace and your mercy and your love. Now, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless us and keep us. Make the light of your face shine upon us and give us boldness as we move forward. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your peace, the peace that the world can't give us and the world certainly can't take it away. I say this in all other prayers in the precious mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. You all may be seated. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my uh, great privilege and honor to welcome our newest member of the Metropolitan Council, Delicia Porterfield in District 29. <laughs> welcome, Council Member. Um, you picked a good night to start with us. All right. uh, Council Member Lee. Yes, uh, sir. Point of personal privilege. All right. I would like to take a second. I haven't been able to do this before. I've been missing. I think I missed a meeting then I, because of a committee meeting. But I, I want to take a second and thank all of you so very much um, for the love that you sent um, for the uh, death of my husband, and then the death of my brother-in-law, um, all of the calls I got, the texts, the presents, the um, flowers. Um, I really felt, oh my gosh, and even um, the showing up at the funeral, at the memorial, um, I really felt all the love. And from the deep down in my heart, if I haven't had a chance to thank you um, personally, thank you all so very much, it meant a lot. And also, sir, uh, on April the 11th, I am having a community-wide uh, meeting that is going to be at the Spring Smiths Recreation Center, 2801 Smith Springs Road. I hope everybody will come out. We're gonna have all of the different divisions of Metro there um, so that you can go out and talk to uh, the different div uh, divisions and ask questions. And because I'm having it at 6 o'clock, you're going to miss dinner. Um, I'm having pizza there as well. So please come out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're out of order on that last one, but I'll let you do it. All right. So um, I'm scared to do this. Council Member Vircher, for what reason? Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. I'm deeply humbled uh, that you're recognizing me. I would like to take a point of personal privilege also. Um, just real fast, want to thank Catherine and um, uh, the, her EG, uh, EDCU 1220 class. Um, was delighted to speak to them today about um, this beloved council and how we do business and so forth. So I made a promise to them that I would give them a, a shout out um, today. And they are viewing because their class ends at 7. So this is your official shout out on behalf of Vice Mayor Schulman and the Metropolitan Council. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So you are also out of order, but you're also the budget chair, so I'll let that one go. Um, Councilmember Van Rees. 
This is a whole new part no. of the agenda no, for the no, council. I, act I actually asked for permission on oh, this well, personal I was going to tell you to do it later, but oh, you no. can do it you, now. That's you, fine. you hit my microphone, so that's okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to uh, indicate that today, uh, 45 years ago on April the 2nd, uh, Kathy Kojenko became the first out elected uh, winning a seat for the Ann Arbor, Michigan Council. Uh, today, nationally, we celebrate Out to Win Day. All electeds are wearing rainbow, and you can see the beautiful tie that Mr. Withers has on. 4.5% um, of the U.S. Uh, identify as LGBTQ, but only 0.1% are represented. Nearly 23,000 people would need to be elected for equity in the United States. In this 2019 election year, there are, as of this day, seven out candidates running for a seat on Metro Council. On behalf of Councilman Brett Withers and myself, we welcome more to consider public service and celebrate Out to Win Day. You can learn more about this at victoryinstitute.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Um, Council Member O'Connell, for what reason? You thank, thank you, Mr. President. Is this, is this when I call the question? Uh, this is where you move to adjourn. I oh, think. okay, yeah. great. Yeah, I'd like to, I, I would accept such a motion. <laughs> Was that it? That's all you were standing up for? Thank you very much. All right, so um, back on the agenda with that objection. Uh, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from March 19, 2019? I've got a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, just a couple of comments before we go on. Uh, we do wish to express our condolences to the family of Representative Ben West, uh, who just recently passed away. Um, we do want to acknowledge that the uh, Lipscomb's, uh, Lipscomb's men's basketball team is playing in the semifinals right now in Madison Square Garden. I believe they've been playing for 45 minutes. Don't tell me the score. Uh, congratulations to uh, Lindsay and Colby Sledge on the birth of their son, Arthur Courage Sledge. He's born at 5.20 a.m. on March 25th, 7 pounds, 3 ounces, and 19 inches. And Council Member Sledge is... Um, going to be here in just a little while, so you can congratulate him. I think he's taking care of his new son, all right? So uh, reports from committees other than legislation, any, um, any reports? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we are on to uh, elections and confirmations. Council Member Lee, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, the Fair Board reappointed uh, Mr. Heyman, uh, seven to zero. The Fire and Building Code Appeals Board, uh, Mr. Clark, seven to zero. Nashville Education Community and Arts Board, um, Ms. Brandmere and uh, Ms. Masters, seven to zero. Planning Commission, uh, the reappointment of Ms. Blackshear and Mr. Hayes. Um, seven to zero, Sports Authority, the appointment of Mr. McGee, seven to zero, Transportation Licensing, uh, Licensing Committee, Commission, seven to, uh, for Mr. Rogers, seven to zero, um, the appointment of Mr. Toby Compton was deferred for one meeting. Um, the appointment of Ms. Davis and Mr. Pepper was approved uh, seven to zero, and I would like to move all of these, all right, except so you, for the deferral. All right, so you have a, uh, heard the motion for the confirmation of all members except for Mr. Compton, whose um, uh, appointment was uh, deferred. Uh, motion to confirm all those individuals. There's a motion, do I have a second? Second. Properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, um, so um, if you will, if you will please stand as I Thank call you, your name. Thank you, Council Member. Um, Mr. Caleb Hemmer to the Fair Commissioner's Board. Mr. Randy Clark to the Fire and Building Code Appeals Board.
Ms. Shauna Lynn Brandmeier and Ms. Emily Booth Masters to the NECAT board. Ms. Lillian Blackshears and Mr. Jeff Haynes to the Planning Commission. Mr. Aaron McGee to the Sports Authority. There he is, he's all the way in the back, he couldn't find a chair. Uh, Mr. Kerry Rogers to the Transportation Licensing Commission. Uh, Ms. Ashanti Davis and Mr. Ross Pepper to the Zoning Appeals Board. So on behalf of the entire Metro Council, we want to thank you for your willingness to serve and to volunteer your time and expertise. A big thank you from the City of Nashville. All right, so we're now going to move to um, resolutions and bills on public hearing. Uh, I will call up the resolution or bill one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. So unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. I will then, and this is for purposes of the audience in the back, I'll then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor, and then I will ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition. If anyone in favor wishes to speak, I will ask you to come forward, come to the back podium, introduce yourself and give us your address, and then you'll have three minutes in which to speak. I will then ask if anybody opposed wishes to speak, and they also get three minutes. Again, introduce yourself and give us your address. Let me repeat that since we have a big crowd. Um, so I'm going to uh, open the public hearing. Well, I'm going to start with going to the sponsor of the measure. Uh, if the sponsor defers, then the, the public hearing is um, off for the night. Uh, but uh, the sponsor will usually call for a public hearing, then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor, and then I will ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition. If people wishing to speak in favor uh, want to, I will ask them to come forward, introduce yourself, and give us your address, three minutes in which to speak. Same thing goes to those who are opposed. Uh, after that process, I will close the public hearing and then refer back to the sponsor. So um, we will now be on resolutions on public hearing. Uh, the first one is RS 2019-1652 by Council Member Murphy. Resolution exempting Castrillo is located at 3501 Park Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit pursuant to section 7.08.090.E of the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Murphy, you are recognized. Committee reports, please. All right, so who's got that? Council Member Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, the councilwoman didn't show, so we had to defer by rule. Okay. So we just do just defer the whole thing? Okay, so yep. Council Member Murphy. I was trapped in another meeting, and so I need this deferred one meeting. Okay, so uh, this will be deferred automatically one meeting, all right? All right, thank you. Um, RS 2019-1653 by Council Member Dow. Uh, resolution exempting Exotica Indian Cuisine located at 5385 Mount View Road from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit pursuant to section 7.08.090.E of the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Dow. Oh, Council Member Potts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At the crest of Council Lady Dow, she said to open the public hearing. All right, let's get a committee report. Council Member Roberts, you got this one? Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, we had to defer by rule. All right, so we're gonna have to defer this one. All right, so this one we deferred one meeting. All right, thank you, all right. 
All right, we're now on bills on public hearing. Um, I think we can take the first two together. This is BL 2018-1357 by Council Member Kendall and substitute bill BL 2018-1358 by Council Members Kendall and Allen. Uh, the first one was approved by the Planning Commission subject to adoption of BL 2018-1358, six to zero on 9-27-2018. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by canceling a plan unit development overlay district on property located at 3419 Murphy Road, approximately 100 feet west of West End Avenue is 1.47 acres. And substitute bill BL 2018-1358, council members Kendall and Allen approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission, five to one, also on 9-27-2018. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from ORIA to SP zoning on property located at 3419 Murphy Road, approximately 100 feet west of West End Avenue within a planned unit development overlay district 1.47 acres to permit a mixed use development. Council Member Kendall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we don't need committee reports on this, do we? No. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to open the uh, public hearing on both of these. Okay, so we're on BL 2018-1357, BL 2018-1358. Um, so um, I declare the public hearing open. Can I have a show of hands for those who are in support of this measure? Okay. All right, can I have a show of hands of those who are in opposition to this measure? All right, so uh, anyone in favor of wishing to speak? If so, please come forward, line up. Uh, again, introduce yourself, give us your address, and you have uh, three minutes in which to speak. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Good evening, my name is Jeff Pape with GBT Realty Corporation, 9010 Overlook Boulevard, Brentwood, Tennessee, and we're the applicant for this agenda item. I'd like to start by thanking our District Councilman, Ed Kindle, <clears throat> as well as adjacent District Council members, Berkeley Allen and Kathleen Murphy. All three have put considerable time into this project over the past year, and we, we very much appreciate their dedication and leadership. We're happy to be here tonight after what has been a year-long process. That effort has included one Planning Commission deferral, Planning Commission approval, one vote shy of unanimous decision that included staff support, five City Council deferrals, 13 public meetings, four small format meetings with the Richland West End Neighborhood Association Board, and countless other meetings and discussions with stakeholders. Those discussions continued right up through late this afternoon. We had a call this afternoon with Jim Kelly, who has been acting as their representative to discuss those issues. On the call, we were able to reach an agreement that Jim indicated he would recommend to his board for approval. So we're hopeful that we've reached an agreement with the Richland West End Na um, Neighborhood Association. I would like to be very clear on one issue. We're not asking for any incentives on this project. <clears throat> In fact, we've gone the opposite direction. As part of the project, we've committed to donations for surrounding neighborhood improvements. We've committed to installing traffic calming measures on Ackland and Orleans in the Love Circle area, worth roughly $75,000. We've also committed to a $100,000 donation to Metro Parks and Greenways or installation of curbing and other improvements to address exi an existing parking issue adjacent to the nearby Greenway. Discussions on this item were part of the conversation earlier this afternoon. Both of those commitments are a direct result of requests from the community during the public process. We started this process over a year ago because we knew this is the right site for this project. But we didn't make that decision in a vacuum or out of the blue. Nashville Next defines this location as well suited for a development of this nature. In fact, it identifies this site as ideal for a larger, more dense development due to its direct access and proximity to existing infrastructure. We followed the path we always do. We studied the community growth plan to determine what the community plan identified as a proper location for this type of growth. And that's what led us to this site. We're very proud of the project we're presenting to you tonight, and we feel this is a shining example that the public process works. Other members of our team will discuss all the wonderful changes we've made as a direct result of the public process. Once again, I'd like to thank the council members who have helped us throughout this process. But I would be remiss if I didn't also thank the literally hundreds of people that participated in the public process that made this project what you see before you tonight. We know that we will never satisfy everyone on a project of this magnitude, but we feel we've addressed a majority of the issues raised. We thank you all for your consideration this evening. All right, thank you. 
Hello, my name is Elizabeth Tice. I live at 209 Mason Avenue, which is at the corner of Mason and Long Boulevard. I'm in District 21. I very much support this project. I am currently have residences surrounded by office buildings, and I think this would be a great project to walk to. It's an opportunity with a hotel for friends and families and relatives to stay. It's a very well-designed project. I think they have done a great job of making it community-based with everything we have booming and growing in our city. I did not move to that area. I've been in that area almost 10 years, and I did not move there expecting that anything would not change. I expect something would change, improve, and grow, and densify. This is a city. We are in an urban core, and I very much support this project. Good evening. I'm Steve Kolinsky. I live at 1125 Belvedere Drive. I am I'm with CBRE, and I represent the existing landowner. And we've been watching this whole process from, from afar, and we believe that George has done a great job in developing this property, done a great job in listening to the, to the, uh, the comments and, and the community, and we're urging you to vote, vote for this. You know, Nashville continues to grow. This property is in great demand. There, there are a number of buyers lined up uh, if, in fact, this is not successful with George. Uh, cash buyers, and I've seen some of their plans. Uh, again, I urge you to vote for this. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Thanks for your service, first of all. My name is Russ Hale. Uh, I live at 818 19th Avenue South. Um, I'm the managing partner with Goodwin Mills & Kaywood. We're an architectural and engineering firm. We are less than one block from this site. We're at 3310 West End Avenue. Um, I've had many meetings with my employees to get what we have 40 employees and what they thought about it and what, what they think about the project that came out there. They, they were excited about more places to walk for lunch and entertainment. Uh, there's a there's, there's possibility of living close to the office and be able to walk there, but also to clean up some of the traffic issues on the short part of Murphy Road and West End and the I-440 Parkway right there. It, it could really be improved. Uh, I have personally reviewed the design proposal that GBT's put together with Gresham Smith. Um, I think it's a, an excellent use of the property. I think it's done very well. Uh, and it's my opinion that it's consistent with the Nashville Next Plan. And so with that, I'd offer my personal and professional uh, recommendation for this project. Evening, Council. My name is Frank Thomas, and my address is 4301 Wyoming Avenue in Sylvan Park. Um, I'm here to voice my support for this project. I've uh, had the privilege of being a resident of the Sylvan Park neighborhood since 2011 and have had the benefit of watching the neighborhood evolve and change in really a great way since I moved to that area. Um, one of the things that we've been lacking is some additional amenities in the area uh, from a commercial perspective. And I think that this project would actually be very well suited for this piece of property. Uh, it's, it conforms to the National Next plans. Um, having the mixed use element, I think, is a benefit to the location, to the area. Um, I, for one, am excited about the prospect of having some additional uh, retail opportunities to take advantage of and bringing in a hotel component would actually be great to create an alternative for, um, for folks who don't want to come and stay in sort of the downtown core of all the new hotels that are going up there. Um, you know, I've got family that loves to come and visit and they would love to have something like that as an op option for them that's so close to, to my house. Um, I, I think that the the overall design of this will help to ultimately create, uh, increase walkability in this area, and I sincerely hope that you vote in favor of it. Thank you. I'm Rusty Dunn. I live at uh, 212 Belclair Place, Nashville. I've been a resident in this area about 25 years. Um, I'm here to support the project. Uh, I think it's a perfect location for this kind of project. It's a, uh, it's a piece of property that's sort of an island to itself. It's got a uh, gas station on one side, a retail center on the other, interstate behind it. It's really not part of a residential community. Uh, the main interstate dumps right in front of the property. I think the hotel would be great to have. I think the developer's done a good job of listening to the neighborhood and making changes. 
But I also think the city needs these property taxes and hotel revenue. We've got this our affordable housing problem we're trying to fund. I think this project will contribute millions of dollars toward that. I'm in favor of it. Good evening, members of council. My name is Mark Legasse, and I want to express how excited I am for GBT Realty has identified such a perfect location for development. I have lived in Nashville all my life, and for the past 15 years, I've lived at 4102 Aberdeen, which is part of the historic Cherokee Park neighborhood and flanks Murphy Road and borders historic Richland. I have listened to the current concerns from other neighbors, seen their signs in opposition, viewed the website in opposition, and disagree with those against this project in every aspect. We have all chosen to live in a beautiful, walkable, quiet, and protected historic neighborhood with convenient access to West End, Charlotte, 440, and I-40, and frankly, our convenient location has only prompted jumping in our cars and leaving the area every evening and weekend for all of our entertainment. With high density of our commercial quarters surrounding our neighborhood, starting with this building, we'll have more options all within walking distance. It will also bring hundreds of jobs to the area, as well as enable us to have the live, work, and play goal everyone wants of their neighborhood. I have read the traffic studies by Bob Murphy and KCI, and I feel the feel the opportunity to have this building next to us far outweighs the negatives of additional traffic. I compliment the developers in placing the structure directly next to 440's exit ramps as a perfect compromise to satisfy the demand of Nashville's growth while taking into consideration Nashville's number one problem, traffic. Most of the developments of this size around Nashville are owned and operated by out-of-town real estate firms and their only interest is to build it, stabilize it, flip it, and move to the next city and never look back. We are fortunate that GBT has identified not only Nashville, but focused their attention on our neighborhood as, as where they see the most potential for long-term success, worthy of putting their impeccable reputation on the line in their own community. I look forward to having one of GPT's developments as my neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elam Freeman, and I'm a resident at 111 Acklin Park Drive, and I'm supportive of this project because I believe that Nashville needs more um, walkable communities, and the West End community is in need of more commercial spaces um, for restaurants and um, other amenities for residents in the area, and I believe that a hotel will help the existing businesses, um, and I am support of G GBT to do this project. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Scott Denbo. I live at 202 Mockingbird Road in Cherokee Park, which abuts the Richland, Richland West End neighborhood. I've lived there for the past six years and think that the Richland West End Park and Cherokee Park neighborhood is the greatest neighborhood in Nashville. It's a lovely place to raise kids. Um, and you know, we enjoy the walkability of it. Um, I believe GBT's project is going to enhance the neighborhood enormously, providing more opportunities for us to not get in our car on the weekend, um, to have nice amenities. Uh, we already walk up to Dose, which is in, uh, the building neighboring this parcel um, on a weekly basis. Um, enjoy the walk. Um, secondly, GBT is an excellent developer. I think I want to stress the fact that they are local. Unlike most of the development that is occurring in Nashville currently, they, uh, they live in Nashville. George Tomlin and his family are natives of Nashville. And, uh, you know, they are invested in this community. And I hope, hope you guys understand that. Um, I do think most of the people in opposition to this bill uh, would prefer no development existing at this site ever. It's currently a bit of an eyesore. Um, and I think this will do a lot to improve the neighborhood. So. I would definitely encourage you guys to vote for the for this project. Thank you. My name is John Dotson. I live at 3505 Central Avenue. Um, I'm here in large part because Councilmember Kendall asked me to be here, and I think all of you know how important it is to keep your word to Councilmember Kendall. I've lived in this house for 13 years. And as a point of reference, I live in the very small part of the neighborhood that's actually going to be able to see this, and I'll be able to see it every day. When I look at it, I'm going to see progress and prosperity. I'm also going to see the benefits that it brings to our neighborhood. And it's important, as others have noted here, that this is not actually in our neighborhood. 
this is not actually in our council manic district, but that didn't stop GBT from coming on their own to our neighborhood and initiating stakeholder meetings. I, after five of them that I attended, they made significant changes based on what they heard and what they said they would do. And all this happened, although what they proposed to build to begin with was in context with Nashville 2020 and Nashville Next. And now it's the, sa the same height as the building across the street. So at that point, I don't think there's anything else GBT should be asked to do. It becomes a matter of subjective opinion. I understand a lot of my neighbors just don't want it built, and, and I, I hear them, but still, I stand here and 100% support of this change. And while I do hear their objections, there are a number of us in the neighborhood who really do want this to be built. I've spoken to more than 30 of my neighbors about that. But one of the things I find really interesting is about 35 years ago, our neighborhood began to change. And I can promise you the people who lived there then didn't like the change that befell them. I think it's worked out pretty well. So let me say something that's even more important to me. I really respect and appreciate how my neighbors have so vigorously expressed their opinions in opposition to this. What that says to me is they love this neighborhood, and so do I. So we can agree on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Darren Kirkus, I uh, live at 117 Fairmont Place. Um, I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, if you don't know, 117 Fairmont Place is, is pretty much a stone's throw from this building site, at least if you have a good arm. And um, I'm most excited about the opportunity that this is going to bring to uh, improve traffic flow, work on the road there in this intersection that wouldn't happen for a, a long time, I imagine, if, if this weren't to take place. And then I'm really excited about the opportunity for, you know, more there to be more commerce there, something that's close to get to. And I think it's very important that as Nashville is certainly a booming town, that this portion of West End isn't left out. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to this project. It seems to have been designed very well, and I've been impressed viewing very much from the outside with the willingness the developers have had to meet and make concessions, I think over a dozen different you know, meetings and, and public hearings and so forth on that. So I look forward to and would encourage you to pass this measure uh, so that we can see this progress and this growth uh, in our community. Um, there certainly will be growth pains. When the project starts there, I will hear it. Whatever project happens there, I'll hear it. I'll hear it when they're working on 440. But I'm very glad both are happening. And um, while there are some pains to growth, the pain to refusing to grow is, I think, we'll find much, much worse. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kim Hawkins. I live at 2205 Natchez Trace. And tonight, I'm here wearing two hats. One, I'm a 25-year resident of Hillsborough West End neighborhood, and I'm also part of the GBT team as a planner and landscape architect. So I accepted the offer from GBT about a year and a half ago to be part of this team only after reviewing the Nashville Next policy, because this is my neighborhood. I can walk to this site. I believe this location is well-suited to accept the density of the development that is coming to our city and would do so in keeping with the policy and the intent of Nashville Next. The site sits in a triangle bounded by an interstate highway, the five-lane Murphy Road, and the six-lane West End Avenue. For that reason, it's been identified in Nashville Next as one of the highest density planning typologies, a T5 mixed-use policy. That's one step down from our urban core, and it's within a tier one center which is intended to provide a high density of uses and offers future opportunity for transit and transit-oriented development. This area received a further scrutiny in 2014 in planning's Midtown study, public process, and received a special policy area designation. Uh, these area additional policies support the proposed ground level active uses of retail, restaurant, outdoor dining, and the mix of uses that in this case includes hotel housing as well as that retail. The special policy specifically supports building heights of eight to 20 stories. 
This plan before you tonight is well within that guidance and policy. The development height is, goes from 10 to 15 stories, so it's five to 10 stories lower than the height allowed out of deference for the request from nearby residential neighbors. The development in a more dense form was approved by our Metro planning staff and by the Planning Commission, and I acknowledge the dedication and the commitment of GBT and of the neighbors as they continue to work together to address concerns and make adjustments for a total of 13 public meetings and four additional private neighborhood leadership meetings. We know that our city is growing, and we know that your job is to make the choice about where that occurs. We should locate appropriate density as called for in our adopted plans and policies and as supported by our Metro staff and our appointed planning commissioners in locations where existing infrastructure exists. That's utilities, that's roads, and that's services that provide a more walkable, active, and connected node for the broader community. This is where we can and should be supporting additional density. I appreciate your support. Evening. Joe Booker, 222 Second Avenue. I'm here and uh, representing the design team. Um, we've gone through an extensive design process on this project uh, with feedback from city staff, the community, and along with the developer pushing for a very high quality addition uh, to the West End area. Since approval through the Planning Commission, we have further reduced the total height of the building by 52 and a half feet just to lessen the perceived impact on the neighborhood development. Uh, base zoning of the property should be noted as an ORIA, which was noted in the staff report, which allows for a 105-foot tall building with unlimited residential density so long as someone stays within that height. That allows somebody to build a building on this site of 430,000 square feet, right? And it would create a solid building wall of a 10 stories against Murphy Road. The proposed design is actually 70,000 square feet lower than what would be allowable by base zoning and a building that could be constructed of the same exact use and treats the streetscape and the public realm with more subtlety and softness than would be required by base zoning. We've allowed, followed the guidelines of nationally recognized planning principles by placing access for cars along the back alley side and activating Murphy Road through a variety of design elements. We pushed the parking below ground, broken the massing in two, and created a public courtyard between the buildings accessed directly from Murphy Road. We proposed permanent building materials such as brick and stone and soften the project by providing green landscaping on every edge and every elevated deck. These critical moves in design will foster more street activation and provide a more varied human experience to the project. The project is not maximizing density but rather breaking down a continuous building wall which is allowed and promoted by the base zoning and providing a varied and walkable streetscape. It provides open space between buildings. The design is specifically aimed at creating smaller, less impactful structures, but in order to do so, we're asking for a little bit extra height. Yeah. The proposal is appropriate to the size and character of many of the buildings that already exist along the West End Corridor, and the building will be an excellent pedestrian-oriented addition to the West End area. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Brandon Taylor, I'm 213 Manchester Avenue. I'm a registered professional engineer in Tennessee. I represent KCI Technologies, which is formerly RPM Transportation Consultants. A traffic study for this development was conducted by our team in June of 2018. Our study was prepared in conformance with Metro guidelines and was reviewed and approved by Metro Public Works. The study included eight intersections. Data was collected in March of 2018 when all schools and universities were in session. The information was used to determine existing traffic conditions. To establish projected traffic volumes, we followed the standard practices consistent with Metro guidelines. <coughs> Capacity analysis of the existing and projected traffic volumes were conducted to determine impacts of the development. The development is located in an area of mix of uses. It will generate pedestrian traffic and have opportunities for transit use. Internal trips between the various uses within the development will occur and were accounted for. Our team worked closely with Metro Public Works to identify appropriate intersection and traffic improvements, making sure that vehicular and pedestrian traffic is accommodated. Our analysis showed that the plan improvements, the study intersections will operate at similar levels of service in the future with the development and improvements as they would without the development and with no improvements. A highlight of the study recommendations conditioned by Metro Public Works are as follows. At the intersection of West End Avenue and Murphy Road, we will eliminate the split phasing for Murphy and Orleans Drive. 
<clears throat> the modified phasing and timing of the traffic signal will result in much more efficient traffic operations. Under projecting conditions with these improvements, there will be a reduction in intersection delay of approximately 50% when comparing the existing 2018 AM and PM peak hours to the projected year 2021 peak hours. At the intersection of Murphy Road and Murphy Court I-440 on-ramp, a traffic signal with pedestrian improvements will be warranted and installed by the developer. The concrete triangle median at I-440 will be removed to allow better movements onto the ramp. The northbound approach of Murphy Court will be widened to provide one ingress lane and two egress lanes. The improvements result in level service B under projecting conditions projected conditions, as well as much safer pedestrian accessibility. At the intersection of Murphy Road and alley number 1138, the northbound approach will be widened to provide one ingress lane and two egress lanes. In addition to those improvements, there will also be a requirement for travel demand management plan, which includes bike parking, bike lockers, and a rideshare component. Bike lane improvements along Murphy Road from Bowling to West End traffic calming improvements in the Hillsborough West End neighborhood along Ackland and Orleans Drive, and curbing improvements along West End Place and Park Circle. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Beth Ostrowski. I live at 5539 Knob Road. I'm a registered professional engineer in Tennessee, and I represent KCI Technologies, formerly RPM Transportation Consultants. Tonight, I'd like to focus on three elements within this development that have been the focus of numerous questions and discussions. First, traffic signal spacing. The traffic improvement plan for this project has been very well thought out and thoroughly analyzed. Our analysis shows that the proposed traffic signal at Murphy Court will improve access and safety with low delays to traffic on Murphy Road. The proposed signal spacing is consistent with accepted engineering practice. The approximately 750 foot spacing between the signal at West End and the proposed signal at Murphy Court is typical in urban areas. Further, it is common for adjacent interchange ramps to be signalized. Finally, all four signals from West End to Bowling will be interconnected so that they can be synced together to operate at maximum efficiency. Second, cut through traffic. KCI's traffic analysis, including analysis of travel times, indicates that local streets will see a negligible impact from traffic generated by the development. While the impact will vary by street, less than 5% of total site trips are anticipated to distribute onto these neighborhood streets. KCI collected volume and speed data on Ackland Avenue and Orleans Drive in the Hillsborough West End neighborhood and on five streets as specified by the Neighborhood Association in the Richland neighborhood. In the Hillsborough West End neighborhood, collected speeds indicate traffic calming is warranted and speed cushions have been conceptually designed. In the Richland neighborhood, data did not indicate speeds that would warrant traffic calming measures per the standards for traffic calming within Metro. For that reason, traffic calming measures were not recommended. Finally, parking. Tonight, you will likely hear from others that the development does not plan to park to code. This is inaccurate, as identified in the specific plan language. The development does plan to park per code and based on market conditions will likely have excess parking. Owen will elaborate shortly, but the bottom line is that parking for this development will be designed to meet the code. As a traffic engineer for KCI, I have worked on more than 100 developments within Metro Nashville. This development represents a project that I am proud to have worked on. The project is thoughtfully designed and the conditioned traffic improvements will result in safe and efficient operations on the surrounding street network following the completion of the development. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Owen Sanford. I'm with Premier Parking. Um, I live at 1328 Westvale Drive. Um, as many of you may know, Premier Parking is a local Nashville company. We operate valet parking for over 1,000 hotel rooms, over 40,000 square feet of food and beverage and retail space, and we manage over 25,000 parking spaces in the greater Nashville area. Um, we 
<clears throat> work directly with GBT to build a shared parking and demand model for this project in particular. Um, and, and what we have found um, across just Nashville in general related to hotel parking is that the actual demand for parking spaces <clears throat> per hotel room is actually 0.25 parking spaces per room. Um, as many of you know, ride share and different modes of transportation are on the rise and that has had a significant impact on the actual utilization of parking spaces for hotel developments as well as their food and beverage or retail outlets. Um, <clears throat> currently, as the project is designed, during peak demand, so when all spaces are going to be occupied, we're only seeing 116 non-residential spaces occupied, which is well below what the building is offering as far as number of parking spaces and well below what the code requires us to provide. Um, so the actual demand will not even meet what code is required. Um, in addition to that, the project will be offering 1.5 hours of free parking, um, which is a bit on the high side for developments similar in the area. Um, and it will be evaluated after one year, but something that GBT felt strongly about. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Matthew Siegel, 4606 Illinois Avenue. Um, council members, uh, first of all, thank you for your attention to this important project. Uh, our company, Calvert Street Group, was brought on board by the developer, GBT, to facilitate genuine and meaningful community outreach, seek input from neighbors, uh, and engage in a healthy discussion with neighborhoods about the redevelopment of the Fifth Third Bank site. Uh, we first began that discussion nearly a year ago, uh, a length of time that should speak to how deliberate and deliberative this process has been. In the interceding months, GBT has met with the community 17 times, uh, four of those hosted privately at the homes of neighborhood association leadership and another, another 13 at public venues. Specific details on these meetings are found in our submission, uh, but suffice to say, the public meetings range in size, scope, and location. Uh, some had only a handful of neighbors and others had nearly 100 in attendance. GBT rented the venues, coordinated with council member lift serves, uh, and sent out notices via mail to a large radius from the site. Just to dwell on that point for a moment, uh, even though the notice zone prescribed by planning was only 600 feet, uh, GBT invited neighbors well over a mile away. It was the right thing to do. This process has been a model for public engagement. Our team took outreach directly to neighbors' doorsteps. We knocked on 327 doors to talk about the project and hear concerns. About half of them were in Councilmember Murphy's district and the other half in the other two districts. Uh, after approval of the Planning Commission, we visited another 157 homes. The vast majority of neighbors were appreciative of the conversation. Furthermore, from these canvases, 52 petition signatures and 46 letters in total, almost 100 statements of support have been submitted either either in our filing or directly via email to you all. Uh, these signatures are primarily from people in council members Kindle and Allen's districts within a small radius of the proposed development. These residents appreciated retail options, free public parking, a more urban approach to a major corridor, walkability, and many of the other uh, positives you've heard tonight. One of the threads running through Nashville right now, perhaps highlighted by the cherry tree debacle of the past week is that Nashville residents feel like they aren't being consulted and their input isn't being sought. Large entities from out of state see Nashville as a business opportunity more than a city of neighbor, neighbors and neighborhoods. This is not one of those projects. It's an all local project team that takes community engagement and outreach extremely seriously. Therefore, we respectfully ask that you consider the above and beyond efforts of public engagement on this project, as well as the voices, albeit somewhat quieter, of nearly 100 Nashvilleans that strongly support it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Fiona Holter and I'm with GBT Realty. I live at 36133 General Bait Drive. I wanted to draw attention to the 87-page packet on each of your desks. It includes details about the process over the last year as well as the support, emails, and petitions that Matt just referenced and some of the neighborhood correspondence. There's also a summary sheet on top and I just wanted to highlight a few key p points that are on that. These are changes made to the project after planning commission approval in direct response to neighborhood input. We reduced the height of the buildings by 52.5 feet and ended up to a maximum height of 155 feet, which is where the Richland Board requested that we be in writing. 
We changed the office to residential use and as a result realized a 35% reduction in traffic. We softened the materials of the building in direct response to the neighborhood input as well as the planning commission condition and addressed reflectivity by limiting glass and then further, eliminate, further limiting the reflectivity of that glass. We eliminated skyline signage on the western facade and we introduced dark sky lighting elements at the urging of Council Member Allen. To address blasting, we extended the pre-blast zone into the Richland West End neighborhood by two to three times that required by the state and committed to holding three pre-blast information sessions and ongoing weekly updates during blasting. And last but not least, at the leadership of Council Member Kendall, we have committed to a 10% minority contractor participation. There are still conversations to be had and we are committed to those. And these are just a few of the items that we have addressed over the course of the past year. I wanna thank you for your time and your service to Nashville. And I wanna personally thank Council Member Kendall for his leadership through this process. Thank you. Good evening, my name is James Weaver, Waller Lanston, 511 Union Street. And um, my law firm is privileged to work for uh, GBT on this project. Uh, you already heard a lot tonight in my uh, presentation. The last one on this side of the, uh, of the aisle will be mercifully short. Um, first, uh, this project involves the most robust public participation process that I have been involved in in 31 years of doing this kind of work before this body. Um, 13 community meetings, five deferrals here, six, not four, meetings with the Neighborhood Association Board, innumerable meetings with clients, with Councilman Kendall and with others. Um, uh, this process has been, uh, I hesitate to say the model because I hope they don't all take this much time and effort, but certainly this has been an unbelievably robust public process. Secondly, this project is supported by not only Councilman Kendall, but by the Planning Department staff, the Planning Commission. It is consistent, in fact, it would be consistent at, <coughs> at significantly additional height and mass with the community plan. Um, this is where density should be, as you've heard um, numerous speakers before. Uh, I'm quite sure I will be followed, however, by, by some um, folks who live across the interstate from the site uh, who are gonna say that the project is too dense or it's too tall or it's not right for the site. Um, others may say we didn't negotiate in good faith. Um, we've heard all of those things, unfortunately. On your desk is an 80-page memo about this project. It contains all of the email correspondence, all of the back and forth between the development team and the neighbors. And so I would ask that you simply uh, let the written re record guide you in terms of, of this process and the good faith that has been involved, frankly, on both sides uh, 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 of this project as we have gone, uh, as we have gone through it. Um, we continue to negotiate. Um, on this matter, uh, as late as this afternoon, we expect to present a, um, a, an amendment on third um, that will that will uh, evidence what we believe will be an, an agreement with the uh, with the neighborhood association that we hope th um, uh, will result in their withdrawing uh, their opposition to the project. That's certainly our favorite hope. Um, finally, I want to ask you to please move this to third reading, and uh, I want to, on behalf of Mr. Tomlin and GBT, again thank uh, Councilman Kendall for his um, extraordinary patience through this process. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? All right, seeing none, uh, those wishing to speak in opposition, if you will uh, line up. Good evening. Vice Mayor Shulman, et al. I appreciate the opportunity to address this body. Wayne Neal Remini, R-E-M-E-N-Y, is my true and correct birth name. I've lived in this neighborhood. Can you give me your address, if you don't mind? 3606 Pilcher, P like Picasso, I-L-C-H-E-R. All right, thank you. Seven blocks, less than a quarter of a mile from this site. I'm permanently disabled. I no longer drive. I may never drive again. I spend a lot of time on the Greenway. I put this shirt over the Greenway shirt. 
This project will be scant yards from the Greenway, maybe 150 yards. I've heard some of the proponents <laughs> make some statements that are incredulous. I haven't heard, and I could be wrong, any of the proponents that live as proximate as I do. The first gentleman that spoke, proponent, I believe he said Brentwood. That's a long way away. I bank at 3415 Murphy Road. I have since that bank opened maybe 12 years ago. I'm virulently opposed. It's not like some old gray beard that hates progress. No, no. But there's been unbridled growth. I wonder how many of you use exit one, the Murphy Road West End off-ramp. How many of you are aware that it's undergoing a transition now, has been for a few months, from a single lane to take a left turn to get to West End and a single lane to take a right for Murphy Road, it's almost complete. I wonder, I wonder if the fix was in for that. How coincidental, this new expanded off-ramp, almost complete, happening at the same time this proceeding's happening. Unbridled growth is not a good thing. It's a good thing for the carpet bag and scallywags. All that yammer about local, no, well, it sounds real good to some people, but not to me. I don't need whatever the traffic study indicates. We don't. There's my three minute warning. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Jim Kelly. I live at 3702 Richland. I've lived in the Richland and Cherokee Park neighborhood for 35 years. I've been one of the negotiators uh, on behalf of the Richland West End neighborhood. Um, suffice it to say, uh, at 413 this afternoon, uh, GBT agreed to four concessions which were very important to the Richland neighborhood, the Hillsborough West End neighborhood, and the Sylvan Park neighborhood. I'd like to read those into the record and then explain, unfortunately, the, the timing problem this has created. Uh, GBT has offered the, the uh, limit the parking for the, or have minimum parking for the retail and hotel, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the retail and hotel project for the uh, applicable codes requirements with no reduction. There are several things they could do like shared parking and other things that would reduce the number of spaces. They've agreed to waive those and instead take whatever number codes requires, multiply it by 95%. Uh, secondly, GBT's agree agreed to pay for the extruded curbing along the greenways on both uh, West End Circle and Park Circle. Uh, there's a new greenway that's just been built there and without these curbings, we're afraid that the people who uh, we're afraid could uh, use this project but end up parking in the neighborhoods with park in the greenway. So they've agreed to pay that with no cap on the cost. They've agreed to an hour and a half of free parking for the first five years and an hour of free parking for the next year. And they've agreed to do a traffic study within a year after the project opens for Central Avenue, which is in the Richland West End neighborhood. If the study warrants the traffic calming, they will then ins install three speed cushions on Central Avenue, one in each of the three affected blocks. Uh, we, as, as has been alluded to before, we've had very spirited discussions about this. And I would say all of the changes that you've heard were a result of those discussions. Uh, on March 11, we had our last meeting and GBT said no to these four points at which we said, well, we're going to come oppose it, and that's a reason there are lots of people here in opposition. Unfortunately, since we're neighborhood groups and not a business, uh, we've got a lot of people here, 
what we what I have agreed as a member of the board is to recommend that the uh, Richland West End board agree to withdraw its opposition. Unfortunately, since we had two hours notice, we can't do that tonight. Um, Mr. Weaver has assured me that uh, these changes will be incorporated into what's effectively going to be a third substitute ordinance. You have the second one in your packet. And between now and the third reading, uh, those items will be subject or submitted to the Richland Board for approval. And if we don't approve it, then we'll be back. Sorry, my three minutes are up. But uh, we rely on the council's uh, integrity to hold them to their word. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Rafaela Cohane, and I live at 117 30th Avenue North. I'm not sure where some of the people uh, live who don't find West End a walking area, because it's a very walkable area. I live right up the block from Bricktops, and I can walk to about seven restaurants um, right there. And uh, in addition, there's at least three hotels right within sight of my windows from my apartment. So uh, I'm not really sure what they're talking about as far as West End needing more walking things. I can walk to Maggiano's. I can walk to the, uh, the shopping center at Murphy Avenue uh, and West End, and uh, I have no issue with that. Um, my part of my problem with this particular thing is the fact that it has to include a hotel as well. And, uh, and I'm a little tired of SP, and I'm not a big fan of Nashville Next. Unfortunately, I wasn't here when Nashville Next was developed. I wish I were. I would have gone to all those meetings, and I would have let you know exactly what I thought. So on that note, I will stand with my neighbors from Richland West End. If they, if they decide this is okay, then I'm for it. If not, you'll be getting emails from me. Thanks. Thank you, Ray. Hi, my name is Julie Cavallo, and I live at 3720 Richland Avenue. Uh, prior to the developments that occurred two hours before this meeting began, I had some thoughts written down. I want to get them part of public record in the case that those uh, areas of agreement become disagreement in the future. I want to be clear, I am not against development of this area. Many of my neighbors are not against development of this area. My biggest opposition to the proposed SB requested by GBT is that there is already zoning and codes in place for this development. I understand that Nashville is the its city, but there is no doubt that this request is motivated by dollars and cents. It's not for the smart development of this corridor. I have a personal story. Five years after owning my home on Richland, it was discovered that my house needed to be torn down due to termite damage previously hidden from view. At that time, my husband and I realized that we had a blank slate to rebuild. We considered altering our footprint and height for a better resale value of our home, but codes were in place, even though we had an empty lot to consider. As a result, after adhering to the established codes, we have a lovely home that fits into the landscape of our neighborhood. It's a slippery slope to grant exceptions to one homeowner or to one developer. Preservation and responsible building are key to smart development. I can think of only one reason the developers seek a zoning change. It's profit. As one of the oldest neighborhoods in this city and as a neighborhood, a neighborhood that has adhered to codes with established zoning, we should expect you our city council to protect us from adjacent developers that are only concerned with turning a profit. I respectfully ask each and every one of you to slow down. Be responsible. Be smart. Preserve our neighborhoods and vote no to this request should they turn back again. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, council members, for allowing us to speak tonight. My name is Pat Snyder, and I live at 3808 Richland Avenue. The horse may be out of the barn on this, given the late developments, but I think there's something that really needs to be thought about. Size. Size. Currently, this area is zoned for 190,000 square foot development. They are asking for 360,000 square foot development. That is nearly double the amount of what this is currently zoned for. Nearly double. That is a lot on that property. Every change that they are making in that 80-page document has been driven by one thing. People are complaining about the results of size. It's about the size. They agree to come to 155 foot in height, but they added another building. So it's still 360,000 square feet of development. That is too large for that spot. I am not against development. I have lived in downtown Chicago for 10 years. I have lived in Midtown Atlanta. I am for development. I believe that area should be developed, but we don't want another downtown as the entranceway into all of these historic neighborhoods. We want you to think about the size and think about developing under the current guidelines. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Robin Johnson, and I've lived at 3728 Richland Avenue for 25 years. I'm not a member of the board. I'm just a regular resident. But like many Nashvilleans, I'm tired of the unrestrained runaway growth we're seeing in our city. This summer, I found a flyer on my front porch from GBT. It had a picture of a huge 20-story tower and all sorts of fancy words about the luxury amenities that would be offered. I was alarmed, so I got involved. I've attended every single one of the public meetings, and I was also at the Planning Commission. I've been dismayed to see the conversation around this development stem from that original 20-story building rather than the existing code. The developer constantly talks about all the concessions that they've made by reducing the height from that original 20-story building. I want to remind the council, just like my friend Pat, that this land is currently zoned for 10 stories in 190,000 square feet of space, and that allows ample room for development in scale with the existing area. Additionally, I'm concerned about the fact that this proposal continues to change. It changed right up until two hours ago. This is just, it's, to me, I don't understand the planning process. What I know you all have in front of you at your desk is completely different than what I saw approved by the Planning Commission. And so I'm concerned about the, the changes. I don't want to hear they're going to be tweaks and things coming later. I'd like to know as a neighbor exactly what we're getting. And finally, this is what's most personal to me. I work for a local nonprofit, and I see up close every single day the significant needs that we have in this city. And that's not just the clients that we serve. It's my coworkers who can no longer afford to live in Nashville or sometimes anywhere near Nashville. We are not lacking for luxury housing along the West End Corridor. So I see no reasonable rationale for the approval of a proposal that enriches a developer from Williamson County at the expense of our neighbors and offers none of the things that our city truly needs, chief among them affordable workplace housing. Good evening. My name is Rob Robinson. I live at 4010A Colorado Avenue in Sylvan Park. Uh, I'm a native of West Nashville, and I have lived in Sylvan Park for about 14 years. I currently serve as the president for the Sylvan Park Neighborhood Association, which has opposed this proposal. I would like to ask you to do the same. Uh, my primary concerns about the development are traffic, 
and uh, the size of the development. As far as traffic, I would relate to you my personal experience. I currently commute to Franklin and back each day, and I already avoid this intersection because of what are lengthy delays uh, as it is now. Uh, and I understand and appreciate the efforts that are being made to improve uh, the, the issues at the intersection. Uh, I think on their own they might help. Uh, I am concerned that with the significant increase in volume that will come with this development that that will not be enough. Uh, to keep this from getting worse. Uh, my other concern, again, is size. Uh, not necessarily height, but density. Uh, and that is one thing that I don't think has changed significantly during the discussions uh, uh, about this proposal. Uh, the, the density is largely the same, and as has been mentioned, is nearly twice what would be allowed by the existing zoning. I would much prefer to see the existing zoning respected. Uh, another concern I have with that size is uh, I expect that with this development, others like it very nearby would immediately follow. And even if the traffic measures are enough to deal with this development, I am concerned that they will not be enough to deal with uh, similar development right around it. I'm afraid that we run the risk of overwhelming an intersection that's already very busy. Uh, so I would like to see you oppose the proposal. Thank you again for allowing me the time to speak. Good evening. My name is Lauren Benton. I live at 3335 Ackland Avenue, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, I like a good piece of fiction uh, as much as the rest of you, but there's an awful lot of fiction in this process, and so I thought I would just call out some of those elements of fiction that I think you've been treated to tonight. One is the idea that this is an island, that it's an area disconnected from surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, those of us who live in the area view it differently. We view Murphy Road as a gateway to three historic Nashville neighborhoods that are attempting, that are struggling to keep their human scale uh, and to keep their architectural integrity. And from the start, although you've heard a lot of wonderful things about the developer, uh, we as neighbors did not see an understanding of the nature of those neighborhoods and the fight that we're making, I think valiantly on behalf of all of Nashville, to keep those historic neighborhoods uh, reflective of what we, we all love about Nashville. Second, I'd like to call out the myth of robust community input. Uh, I live about two blocks from the site. No one knocked on my door. Uh, I heard about this almost by accident. And then when, after I did hear about it, and by then things were well underway, I attended every meeting. Now, it's one thing to hold meetings, and it's another thing to listen. And I was at a meeting on January 28th at which about 100 people spoke vociferously against the proposal with particular concerns about the height of that tower. And no changes were made after that to the volume of the buildings or the height of the tower. So this was very concerning. Uh, the myth of traffic and how it will flow. You've heard the a good story about how traffic will flow onto the interstate, onto West End. Those of us who live in the neighborhood and those of you who live in other neighborhoods know that there's a lot of cut through traffic that happens in Nashville and that is going to be the result of this development, a significant impact on our quality of life. And uh, uh, also the myth that this development is consistent with the framework for building in Nashville. We should not think of Nashville Next as that framework because as all of you know, Nashville Next was supposed to be accompanied by significant infrastructure improvements to traffic flow, uh, to help our neighborhoods. And since that's not happening, we should not think of Nashville Next as the template for development. And uh, finally, the myth that's already been mentioned, we are not against development. We would love to see this particular plot developed in scale with connection to the neighborhoods, with architectural integrity, um, and uh, within the zoning, existing zoning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Grace Renshaw and I live at 220 Mockingbird. You were all blindsided with this weekend's cherry tree debacle. 
I know how you feel. Since October, I've attended one community meeting a month with GBT, the developer of the proposed SP. The bill you are voting on tonight blindsided us by adding 40,000 square feet, a significant increase from the plan previously proposed. But I wasn't totally surprised. GBT hired professionals to help sell this project and treated community meetings like sales presentations, complete with meaningless statistics like this one. Traffic generated by the smaller version, a 320 square foot of this SP, amounts to two cars per minute over 24 hours. Does anyone here seriously think that traffic from this complex will neatly space itself out at the rate of two cars a minute over 24 hours? We did not have a real across the table discussion of this SP size, traffic impact, and parking until March 11th. This SP still doesn't adequately address those concerns. As one inexplicable feature that may be changed, this bill funds traffic calming in District 18 across West End Avenue from the site, but not for directly adjacent neighborhoods in District 24 that will bear the brunt of the traffic and construction impact. Please do not vote for an SP that appears to treat traffic calming necessitated by a huge construction project as a perk awarded to districts where the council rep supports the project and withheld from those that vote no. All Metro taxpayers will ultimately pay for needed infrastructure improvements not included in this plan. That sort of carelessness or pettiness has no place in a serious urban planning process. Tonight, GBT is asking for a privilege, a special zone written just for them, which is permanent. The specific plan process is supposed to enable neighbors to work with the developer to create a plan everyone can live with, even if no one gets everything they want. That did not happen here. Meetings run like sales presentations aren't really a dialogue. The bill before you will create an SP that's too big for the site. Its traffic impact is an open question. It's located at an intersection that's already gridlocked at peak hours. Taxes from this project, as I understand it, go to the convention and Tourism Bureau, not the general fund. GBT has sold this project as smart development, but this project is smart only for the investors who will make a pat fat profit when GBT sells the building and moves on to their next investment vehicle. Neighbors will live with a bad urban planning decision for years to come. Please vote no. My name is Pat Williams. I live at 4301 Elkins Avenue in Selvin Park. I have something a little bit different to say. I'm an old art major myself, and I have a family member who founded one of the largest architectural firms around, so I've had a little a touch of design in my lifetime. Uh, I've heard some talk tonight about the planning and design abilities of this firm that, that plans to build this development. My only contact with their planning and design is with the Village 21 building, the, which I understand, I believe I heard them say that they completed recently at the corner of Wedgwood and 21st Avenue South. I don't, where a Regents Bank used to sit there, and now there's a Regents in the corner of this large building. I have a friend who can't drive, and she banks at Regents, so I take her to the bank once a month. The first time I pulled in and tried to go into the, you, you have to pull, on, pull off Wedgwood, turn left, and then make an extreme right turn to get into the, to, to pull your ticket to get into the building, to park. The first time I pulled in, I thought, I just made a mistake, and I didn't pull close enough. You cannot turn. It is so poorly designed that you cannot turn and get close enough to, to push the button and pull your ticket to make the arm rise so you can get in the building without putting your window down, opening your door, and stepping out with one foot to be able to reach the button and to pull your ticket. And I'm sorry, that may seem like a small thing to some of you, but if you live or work in that building, you have to deal with that every day. Fortunately, I only have to deal with it once a month. But I'm sorry, if that's a sample of their planning and design, I don't think much of their abilities. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Horick. I live at 220 Mockingbird Road in Cherokee Park. 
I'm not opposed to development. I am opposed to this one because it's too big for the property and it's too big for one short dead end street and two little alleys. I drive the roads around that property every day. And I can tell you that putting several thousand more cars a day in that area will make it much harder to get in and out of my neighborhood. And it will create a new level of mayhem as drivers use an alley to get on West End and try to cut across two lanes in the length of one block to get on I-440. By the way, their traffic study never seriously considered that people would use the alley that way, and they told me it wasn't their problem. Unfortunately, all projects like this seem to pass in a city these days where money talks, neighborhood walks, hype from hirelings counts a lot more than common sense, and you heard from a lot of hirelings tonight, and zoning rules are honored about as much as Donald Trump's wedding vows. What I've learned here over the past couple of years is that ordinary citizens who follow the normal rules of civic engagement don't stand much of a chance against moneyed interests. Hey, you want to put a big honking development in a place where the zoning won't allow that? No problem. We'll go write a special zoning plan just for you. Hey, you want to let out-of-town investors buy up properties and operate them as unregulated mini hotels in residential neighborhoods where zoning doesn't allow commercial businesses? Cool, we'll just redefine them so they don't count as commercial businesses. And if people complain that these investment properties make housing unaffordable, we'll build some new houses that displaced people can't actually afford, and we'll stick an affordable tag on it, and boom, problem solved. Need us to cut down our cherry trees for your tourism event? Absolutely. We just won't tell the public and we won't tell you, the council, and with any luck, the chopping is done before anybody's on to it. And then we can always tell them we'll plant new trees. What I'm learning is it's almost pointless to oppose projects that benefit almost exclusively developers of the tourism industry because they're the only ones who seem to count in today's Nashville, frankly. By the way, at one of the neighborhood meetings about the Murphy Road high-rise, people seemed shocked but not really surprised when Councilmember Cooper explained that the additional tax revenue generated by the new development would go to the convention center at a time when we can't pay our teachers, firefighters, and police enough to actually live here. Given the city's apparent priorities, you should not be surprised when people treat the fate of 21 cherry trees as a symbol of their dissatisfaction with the opaque ways decisions get made on behalf of the ones with the money to influence them. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anna Grimes and I live at 3722 Central Avenue. And I like this neighborhood so much, I've lived in three different houses in this neighborhood. Um, but I, I'm coming to you tonight uh, to say that I think there's a right way and a wrong way to integrate commercial development near an established neighborhood, but this is the wrong way. Um, we have yet to see from these last minute announcements from GBT, and, and we will take that under advisement. I'm interested to hear what, what those are. Um, but if it does proceed as proposed, it'll send a signal to other developers that this kind of disproportionate density is feasible. It'll attract investors looking to profit from projects of similar size and scope. And further, when the current project developers sell the new building, and they will, we will be left to absorb whatever impacts might accrue with new ownership. Nashville is nearing the tipping point when the benefits of growth are obscured by its negative impacts. We need to reframe our relationship with developers. This project fails to take into account the impact it has on most of the people who live nearby. We have work to do. We have children to educate. We have sick people to take care of. A city's health isn't worth the price of indiscriminate development. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Pamela Roller. I live at 324 Greenway Avenue. I would dare say there's a house any closer to this development than mine. When I sit in my backyard and look out, I will see this development. I currently walk to Dose and I walk to Hillsborough Village. I walk to Star Bagel and McCabe Pub. It's very walkable. My kitchen window looks out on Murphy Road. I very rarely see people walking 
uh, up to dose. I see people driving. In the morning, I see traffic backed up past my street every morning. I see traffic on my street backed up every morning. My children and I walked outside of our house one day. We were on the sidewalk in front of our house, and a driver who was impatient, waiting to turn right onto Murphy Road, drove up onto the sidewalk and almost hit us because he didn't like the person waiting to turn left onto Murphy Road. And this is the kind of thing that happens in our neighborhood all the time already. I'm for development. I'm for reasonable development. I would look forward to something that I could walk to because I like to walk. I think that I never got a phone call. I never got an email. I never had a flyer or any notice ever about any public meeting. I never heard about it at all except for our neighborhood leadership. So I'm surprised by what I heard tonight. I attended the meetings. I very rarely had the opportunity to state my case, but I appreciate all the negotiation that's happening and appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Martha Emerson. I live at 3514 Central Avenue, so I'm fairly close to the proposed development. Um, my concern and the concern of many people I've talked to about it is, again, with the height. Uh, as many people here have already expressed, this seems to be a slippery slope. If you grant the SP here and allow the additional height, everybody else in the surrounding properties will want the same uh, change. You're going to bring downtown out to our lovely neighborhoods and our Greenway. We really don't need downtown buildings towering over our neighborhoods. Um, this is an area with schools, with Greenway, with parks, with a lot of pedestrians, and you're really looking at very concentrated and very high growth in a very small area if this is the path that you take. Um, like many other people here, I was not notified about this by anyone other than people in the neighborhood who learned about it. The proposed uh, construction project has changed continuously, and the developers like to say, well, we were going to do 20 stories, when in fact the existing zoning only allows, I think as someone has said, 105 feet. That's a big difference. And they also like to say, well, if we don't build this, someone will come in and build the world's ugliest building right along Murphy Road. And that's pretty inappropriate. We don't know what anybody else would do. I don't imagine that everybody wants to build an ugly building except for GBT. I wish that you please take this into consideration. The height is a big issue. The density is a big issue on a very small corner that is already extremely busy in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Dubois, 3725 Meadowbrook Avenue. Uh, I'm in this district. Uh, I just am begging you to stay within the uh, zoning, what's zoned, and s sort of stay there. I also see a lot of yawning going on. <laughs> I'm sorry this is taking so long, although they were pretty slick, though. I will say that. <laughs> uh, uh, here's what I well, take a look at this room. This this uh, uh, building site is 1.47 acres, which is about the size of this room. So what do you think about putting something that big in a space like this? Although, yep, it's pretty much like that, just like you're, <laughs> she's talking about. But that's the only thing I have to say is just stick to our zoning. If you're going to zone something, then stick to it. And I've heard people say that if you don't change zoning, you'll never have anything built. Well, that's not true. That's like saying if you let somebody do it, you'll have to let, if you let one do it, you have to let them all do it. That's like the same logic. But anyway, I, if, uh, if our neighborhood association comes up with 
uh, a compromise, then I definitely withdraw my opposition. And I, I hope everybody got to read his article in the Sunday paper because it was dynamite. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Come on up. My name is Bill Zink. I live at uh, 3619 Central Avenue. Uh, family lived there for about 17 and a half years. Um, so I came tonight um, not expecting to speak. Really just wanted to come and listen. I've watched and read up online and uh, tried to listen sort of thoughtfully and considerately of both sides. I think there's been a lot of good points made on both sides. Um, I think the, you know, loving the rich and West End areas I do and many folks here do, I feel like there's a little bit of a battle going on for the soul of the neighborhood. Um, you know, the, it is a historic area. Um, I think we need to sort of consider what, what a historic area really means to us individually and as a neighborhood and as a city. Um, I think that um, there's, Progress is important, and I think we all recognize that we're in a city that's growing quickly, but I think what I'm hoping for is that we, um, that we can trust the Metro Council, um, that you all recognize your accountability in this process to um, look for what's best for the city, look for, look for what's best for the neighborhood, and we can all sit here in 10 years and, and think about um, having made the right decision not only for the city, but for the neighborhood, um, for the quality of life we want, and not looked at it as an opportunity to have, um, you know, added tax dollars for things that we're not quite sure where they'll go. So I, I ask you to think about your responsibilities and um, to yourselves, to the neighborhood, to the city, and um, and respect the thoughts that were put into place when that zoning uh, and the amount of space and density was come up with back at. Uh, when, it, when it first uh, derived or arrived at, and not think about trying to push things too far too fast for this area. Thanks. Thank you. Don't see anybody else in the queue. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Kendall. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor. Let me say, first of all, I want to thank all the people who came and spoke, uh, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Crownover, who, who I've met with many, many times and talked to on the phone many, many times. I want to thank you for your professional and, and civil way you've handled this. Uh, one thing I do know, you do love the neighborhood. And I can say that about several people that I see in, in, in the audience. I do want to say that this was not a political issue with me. As you all know, this sits right on the edge of my district, uh, almost out of the district. My initial thought was to redraw it, redraw my zone, and then put it in Kathleen's or, or, or Berkeley's district. But, but I, I, I've always operated under the philosophy that I represent this entire city. Even though I have a council district, that doesn't mean that I don't represent you as well. I felt that way when I on the, was on the school board as well. So I decided to do as much as I could in negotiating this process. And I was glad to hear tonight, and some people say, well, it, it kept changing and changing. Well, it was changing and changing for the better. And I think everybody here will agree with that who was involved in those uh, discussions and negotiations. I was glad to hear Mr. Kelly say tonight, and I know it just got to you tonight, that they have pretty much conceded to everything that we agreed to on that March 11th meeting, which lasted about three hours. But we got a lot accomplished in those three hours. So I, I, I'm encouraging to go ahead and pass this tonight on uh, second reading. And then it's going, uh, they've agreed to do all these things by third reading. They will be a part of the uh, an amendment uh, that will include all the changes. I don't, think, I don't think anybody here will let them get away with that. I don't think anybody here is trying to get away from, with that. So I ask you to pass it tonight, and by third reading, we'll have those amendments, the ones that uh, Mr. Kelly says they agree to and that he will recommend approval on. So I'm asking you to do that tonight. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member. So um, we're on Bill 2018-1357 and substitute Bill 2018-1358. <coughs> it's my understanding that you may have a second substitute on 1358? That's correct. Do you want to move that tonight? Yes. All right, so um, I've got a motion to approve a second substitute on BL 2018-1358 is properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Kendall. Okay, I'd like to move the uh, second uh, substitute amendment uh, at this time. Okay, uh, do you want to describe it or do you want to refer to Mr. James? I, I will refer to Mr. James. It's a very lengthy add-on of, of a lot of different items, so I'll defer to Mr. Jameson. Mr. Mr. Jameson. The substitute alters the maximum square footage from 365,000 to 360,000. It references the building materials being refined to include lower reflectivity glass materials and masonry equipment, also limits the glazing limitations on the facade. Requires a contribution for the tree canopy and greenway curbing, reduces the height from 167 to 155 feet. Uh, eliminates or prohibits uh, sidewalk closure anywhere during construction, not just along Murphy Road as previously. Uh, provides that uh, the first 12 months of operations, the developer shall provide 1.5 hours of free parking uh, and be available to the existing retail businesses, presumably subject to the uh, amendment we heard discussed this evening. Um, requires exceeding the blasting requirements in various respects, a construction parking plan as well. All right, you've heard the description of the, uh, of the uh, second substitute. I've got a motion to approve the second substitute. It's been properly seconded. Uh, I've got people in the queue. Do you all want to talk on the second substitute? Council Member uh, Murphy. Since the substitute makes the bill, I will go ahead and speak now. Um, and I would like to, um, I would love to be able to take credit for the organization of my neighbors who want to raise their hand again, all of them that are here tonight uh, for stable zoning. Um, I would love to be able to take the credit for what these neighbors have been able to organize in multiple neighborhood associations that have taken a position against what is before you tonight. But I can't take that credit. These neighbors organized themselves. Um, they have really put um, just many, many hours into negotiating with the consultants and the developers and all of the, the, the lobbyists and things like that on this. On this. And so they, they really deserve the credit for tonight and the fact that I have four neighborhood associations in my district that have asked me to vote no on this tonight. And I'm going to do that uh, because I haven't seen the new language, I haven't seen this new agreed upon um, offering because it literally came in while we were still in committees today. And what I think I really want to say is, well, some people might say this is the way the process should work and the way community development should work and engagement. It shouldn't be that the neighbors have to fight. They have to, they actually raised the money to hire a lobbyist, but no lobbyist wanted to work for them because of how many other lobbyists were conflicted out with this development program. No neighborhood should have to fight that hard, um, go to meetings after meetings, being short notice, not given handouts to, by the development team. There were plenty of comment cards that were negative at a lot of these meetings that weren't picked up. I've got them. I. Yes, I should have brought my file. I assume that the development team had picked them up. You will notice that tonight their message was not no development. Their message tonight was stable zoning. The zoning here had changed a few times in the past because of Nashville Next, because of when AMP was still an option, what, five, six years ago. This is not a piece of property that was zoned in 1970 when we first enacted the zoning code and hasn't changed since then. This is par a parcel that has a putt on it that could be removed and that can go up to 10 stories and have a whole heck of a lot of square footage. And what they're asking for is let's have some stability. And as you heard the development team say tonight, we're not asking for TIF. Well, they are asking for an additional entitlements that give them a higher profit on this parcel. And it is a slippery slope because there's about six parcels around this one that are still under the zoning or the, the policy that would allow up to 20 stories. 
So it is a slippery slope. Um, trying to just run through some of these, these things um, that I hope to see before filing deadline, the amendment that is promised. And I hope to see all the promises that are made in that amendment. Because I can't tell you how many times this development team has gone back and forth on, we'll pour the curb and gutter, we'll give you only $100,000 to cover trees and curb and gutter. And at, at that point, you know, I, bet, I think it was about two weeks ago that one of the chief lobbyists for this said to me, we are absolutely not negotiating with you and your neighborhoods anymore. And then what happened two hours before tonight? I mean, I think that's a testament not only to the fight that is in my neighborhood and the passion that they have, but also why are we doing this two hours before the council meeting? That's what's upsetting to me, is that my neighborhoods have been working on this. I've been meeting with the development team for probably almost, we're getting close to a year. And you're gonna wait until two hours before the meeting to start making compromises and, and coming really to the table with good faith effort. So tonight, I'm gonna vote no, because I need to hear from my four neighborhood associations that have taken a position here. And after that, I will, con I will be happy to communicate with y'all if they have followed through on their agreements. All right, thank you, council member. So we are on, um, on. So we're on a motion to approve the second substitute. I've got a lot of people in the queue. Um, I'm looking to see if people want to talk about just the motion on the substitute, on the second substitute. All right, seeing nobody that wants to talk, so we are on a motion to get the substitute, second substitute in front of us. It has been properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Okay, so um, the motion to get the second substitute approved is in front of us. It is, uh, we're now on the second substitute. Um, and now back to you, Council Member Kendall, for a motion on 2018-1357 and the second substitute, 2018-1358. Okay, I'd like to <clears throat> move the uh, uh, first substitute. All right, so uh, what you'd like to do, I think, is move both bills on on second okay. reading. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, so we are there properly. Uh, uh, I've got a motion to approve both measures now on second reading, on public hearing, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Kendall. Uh, move approval. Okay, so I've got a motion to approve Council Member Kendall. I mean, I'm sorry, Council Member Hager. Um, but to speak or to approve what? Uh, your button was, you can speak, you can approve, whatever you want to do. I didn't want to speak, thank you. All right. <laughs> he was just waking you up. <laughs> I'll say something there. All right. Thank you, Council Member uh, Hager, Council Member Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, very kindly, my name was mentioned, and I just wanted to uh, address the factual matter that this building way out on 440 is in the tourist development zone, and the sales taxes there do go to the Music City Center. But in a way, it's not that surprising because it is a downtown scale development out in what is a historically suburban neighborhood or right next to that. But on the point of fact is, how could it be in the TDZ? It is out in the TDZ, and that leaves us with another problem in time about how our sales tax revenue so far away from downtown is, is being sent down to downtown. But Mr. Vice Mayor, I just wanted to confirm that as a, as a fact. Thank you. Right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I wanted to thank uh, everyone for coming out this evening. And I don't miss the days, I can tell you, of being a district council member. If there's anything that will tear a neighborhood apart is amending overlays and creating them. But I do want to thank both uh, council members for their work. I just wanted to stand and say that I really appreciated the, the all three, three council members for their work. Um, it's a lot of hours that go into it. Definitely appreciate uh, the comments that were made, and I think that's a part of the public hearing, and it, it provides more insight. I did want to say that I will stand tonight in support in the hopes that those amendments will come through. And the reason I will support is because you can amend a zoning bill at any time. You can withdraw it at any time. You can defer it at any time. So those things can still uh, move forward and in the hopes of having that. It seems like you're doing your due diligence. So I appreciate you and I appreciate everyone for coming out to speak tonight. And just know that it can be deferred or amended at any time. So thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendez. 
Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, so I, I live uh, very close to this, um, about a half mile. My family and I go through the intersection of Murphy and West End multiple times a day. Um, Coming into today, I was going to be a no vote on second reading. With the uh, tentative deal that's been reached, I'm going to vote yes today on second reading with the understanding that if um, what was agreed upon this afternoon doesn't make it into an amendment, I'll definitely be a no on third reading. And, uh, and, and just, I guess, for everybody's consideration, I would mention briefly one of the points that both uh, sides talked about on the, the traffic. So with the crazy schedule we keep, I, I go through that um, intersection and pass that site at 5.30 in the morning. When we leave here at 1 in the morning, I go by there then, <laughs> during the day, all sorts of times. And I mean, everybody should know, anybody who actually lives in the immediate area um, doesn't, it works as hard as they can to act to avoid that intersection completely at rush hour, plus or minus an hour. It's, it is uh, miserable, and the, the concern from the neighbors um, who have to deal with that intersection about traffic um, and the densification of the area are, is completely warranted. Um, and I'll uh, not rehash it. I hope that the, um, the deal today makes its way into an amendment and it can uh, pass on third reading. Otherwise, I'll be a no. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. I also want to thank everyone that, that uh, took the time to come out tonight and also um, all the hours and hours that have gone into attending the public meetings and the negotiating that's, that's gone back and forth. Just a couple of things I want to clarify. I know uh, for some folks, the, the, the changes that have happened along the way have been confusing. They have been in response to, um, to continued input from the neighborhood um, associations and different neighbors. And in, um, in every step of the way, they have been decreases in intensity moving closer to what um, may in the, in, in the long run be something that folks are more comfortable with. Clearly, density and intensity um, and the traffic that comes with that are, are, are the biggest issues that are that are at play here. Um, again, I am appreciative of the, the negotiating that has gone on even up to the last minute. It's um, It would be nice if we could have all this tied up neatly like Council Member Van Rees seems to be able to do, but she's amazing. Um, so some of us, some of us, um, it's, it's a it's a more spread out process. So I am uh, committed to ensuring that the the um, the amendments that have been proposed um, become something that becomes part of the record because that's clearly very important to the to the neighborhood. Um, one other issue that I wanted to to clarify to follow up on what Council Member um, Cooper had mentioned with regard to the tourist development zone, while the sales tax goes to the tourist development zone, property taxes do go to the general fund. So I think that's something that, that is helpful to be aware of. So again, I would say many neighborhood associations have been engaged in this process. We They have expressed, I think, uh, very specifically what their needs have been. It, it se seems to me like we are moving closer to addressing those needs as they've been specifically laid out. So I'm comfortable voting tonight on, on second reading to continue to move forward so that we can see if we can um, get to the place where the neighbors are comfortable. And I appreciate the continued dialogue. Thank you. Right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Swope. Call the question. Previous question's been called. Uh, we're on the previous question. All in favor of voting on the previous question, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question is adopted. Uh, we are on the uh, vote. We are taking, again, BL 2018-1357 and the second substitute on BL 2018-1358. The motion is to approve on second reading, so we're uh, voting. We are on the board. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will open the board. Councilmember Porterfield, this will be your uh, first use of the uh, voting machine. Didn't mean to call you out. <laughs> okay, machine's open. Okay, 
Okay, I think uh, everybody's voted. Madam Clerk, if you will close the machines and take the vote. 29 in favor, two against, one abstention. All right, thank you. So uh, Bill 2018, 1357, and substitu second substitute Bill 2018, 1358 passes on second reading. So um, before we go on, um, a couple of things. I know that there are people outside who are trying to get in for one of the, uh, uh, I think it's um, not this next item, but the third item. So um, everybody's invited to stay, but we do have some people who are trying to get in to, uh, well, that cleared the room. Thank you. <laughs> also been told that uh, Metro 3 is having some audio trouble. So for those of you watching at home, um, hopefully they've got that cleared up. And uh, we also have information about uh, the Lipscomb basketball team. So if you are um, watching at home and don't want to know what, the, uh, what happened, then um, turn off the sound. Literally a spoiler alert. Oh, it's not on sound. The sound's not on anyway. That's a good point. Council Member Swope. So uh, the men's basketball team from Lipscomb University uh, won their semifinal game. So congratulations to Coach uh, Alexander and the Bisons. I believe that's in Council Member Swope. Uh, no, it's in Council Member Pooley's district. Yeah. So we can go ahead. I think um, the people who are coming are actually coming on the third bill that's coming up. So we're on BL 2018-1400 by Council Member Kendall, approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 8-1-2018. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning on property located at 712 26th Avenue North, approximately 495 feet south of Booker Street. It's 0.18 acres. Council Member Kendall, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This uh, particular bill I want to uh, defer for two meetings. Okay, so you've got a motion to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer two meetings is adopted. We're on BL 2018-14-16 by Council Members Henderson, Anthony Davis, and others. Uh, this has been referred to the Planning Commission. It's an ordinance amending Chapter 17.24 of Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code regarding tree density, removal, and replacement requirements. Uh, Council Member Henderson, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to move a deferral to the uh, first meeting in May with a brief explanation, please. Right, I've got a motion to um, defer to the first meeting in May. It's been properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Anderson. Um, I want to thank um, my colleagues, Councilman Davis and Councilman Sledge, Councilman Lady Allen, uh, Councilman Cooper as well, who joined us today for a stakeholder meeting um, with uh, folks representing both the advocacy community and uh, commercial and multifamily uh, builder stakeholders. Uh, this will be, I think, now our fourth stakeholder meeting uh, on this bill, and we're continuing to work uh, and refine it. I think we all saw this week uh, that folks care a lot about trees, and so uh, this will be just one of several bills. There are multiple areas of our code uh, uh, in our uh, different single and two-family space, uh, how we define our urban forester, and some of the things we touched on in Parks Committee, um, just from a process standpoint. Uh, we looked also today and talked about our street tree standards, um, systematizing from a process standpoint our uh, tree bank and how that works. A lot of good work done in that regard with our nonprofit 
uh, partners uh, in the community. So a lot of good work happening on trees, um, and we just need to fine tune this a little bit more. And so with that, I would again renew my motion uh, for a one uh, a deferral to the first meeting in May. Thank you. All right, so we are on a motion to defer to the first meeting in May, been properly seconded. Anybody got any questions on the deferral motion? All right. Uh, all those in favor of the deferral motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion to defer um, to the first meeting in May is adopted. All right, so um, we're gonna hold up for just a minute. Believe that uh, the individuals are coming in um, slowly but surely. So for those, for those of you viewing in the, at home, um, we had a full house, obviously, on the first two uh, bills on public hearing, and uh, we had to clear the room, and now we've opened the doors, and I think we've gotten everybody else, else back in. So we are now on uh, BL 2019-1523 by Council Member Haywood. This was disapproved by the Planning Commission 9-0 on January 10th of 2019. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from IWD and R10 zoning to SP zoning for properties located at 420, 516, and 520 Green Lane, 3448 Night Drive, Tisdale Drive unnumbered, Night Drive unnumbered, Whites Creek Pike unnumbered, and Green Lane unnumbered, approximately 470 feet east of Night Drive. It's 116.76 acres to permit 303 single family residential lots. Um, Council Member Haywood, I'm gonna to come to you and remember that this was disapproved so we have to see the slides. Council Member Haywood. Should I call for um, the public hearing or does he yeah. see the slide first? We are, we are gonna do the slides first. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, this is a request to rezone approximately 116 acres from residential and IWD zoning to SP zoning to allow for a residential development with up to 303 residential lots. The property is shown in red on the, on the screen between Whites Creek Pike and Knight Drive just north of Briley Parkway along Green Lane on the south side. And this is the property once again in red. Green Lane is on the south side of, the, of, the, of this uh, property and Whites Creek is to the west. Um, the existing zoning is residential and IWD. The proposed SP includes uh, primarily two different housing types. There's out of the, th of the 303 single family units, there's 56, uh, house lots and 247 cottage lots. And um, this kind of shows a breakdown of the, the single family lots are shown in red here, and then the cottage lots are shown in red on, the, on this slide. Um, of the, on the proposed SP, there's approximately 77 acres or 67% uh, of open space within the development. Um, the Planning Commission disapproved this primarily for two reasons, and connectivity was the primary reason why the Planning Commission disapproved it. There are several stub streets from existing subdivisions surrounding this property that are not being connected to, and the land use policies for this area, uh, uh, this, these are the proposed homes that are within the SP, and as you can see on this slide, the, the land use policies of the Bordeaux Whites Creek plan call for neighborhood evolving on the north part portion of this property and uh, um, neighborhood maintenance and conservation on other portions of the property. And like I said, the primary reasons for disapproval were the connectivity issues, that the proposed development was not connecting to existing streets on the surrounding, uh, sub with, within the surrounding subdivisions, and the policies in this area call for uh, a 
connectivity to allow for pedestrian movements, for additional routes, for vehicular traffic. Um, this would help to reduce overall congestion and shorten tri daily trips, and it would provide for additional opportunities for emergency r response routes for the proposed development and for the existing development. Uh, so it did not meet that primary goal of the policies. It also um, had lots that are smaller. The cottage lots in certain areas were smaller than what the land use policies called for in the maintenance areas. And so these are the areas shown with a circle circled in red. Those lots were uh, smaller than the lots surrounding them and was deemed to be inconsistent with the maintenance policy for those areas. For, so for those two primary reasons, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval. Thank you. Back to you, Council Member Haywood. I appreciate planning and uh, you, Vice Mayor, and at this time I would like to call for the uh, public hearing. Okay, I declare the public hearing open. Can I have a show of hands of those who are here in support of this measure? All right, a uh, show of hands of, of those who are in opposition to this measure. All right, so I see no one in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? Well, I've got some hands up. Um, Vice Mayor, the applicant does not wish to address the council. All right. All right, so um, uh, seeing no one in uh, favor who wishes to speak and there's no one here in opposition, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Haywood. At this time, I'd like to move for approval. All right, so I've got a motion to approve. We're on BL 2019-1523. <laughs> Um, properly seconded. Anything else, Council Member Haywood? Uh, I just think this is a wonderful development and we've had several community meetings and everything that is involved in it, uh, the community has been very appreciative of. There were certain, there were a few concerns that have been adequately addressed and I would just like to say I look forward to this development. All right, so we are on BL 2019-1523. This is on second reading. Uh, no one in the queue. All in favor on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Thank you, Council Member Haywood. Uh, BL 2019-1529, uh, this is by Council Member Scott Davis and Anthony Davis, approved with conditions by the Planning Commission 10 to 0 on January 24, 2019. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1603 Luton Street, approximately 820 feet north of Gatewood Avenue. It's 0.39 acres. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I drew the short straw tonight and I'm handling Council Member Scott Davis' stuff for him and have signed on for that reason. Uh, I will open this public hearing. All right. Uh, declare the public hearing open. Uh, <laughs> Can I have a show of hands of those who are in here in support of the measure? Kind of waiting for people to clear out. I, do I see one hand? People here in support of this measure? All right, doesn't look like anybody's here in support of the measure. Anybody here in opposition to the measure? Please raise your hand. Just waiting to make sure. Let me try that one more time, just because we had a lot of traffic in the back. Anyone here in support of the measure, please raise your hand. Anyone here in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On behalf of Council Member Scott Davis, I'll move approval. All right, get a motion to approve on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Thank you, Council Member. We're on BL 2019-1530 by Council Member O'Connell. Approve with conditions, disapprove without by the Planning Commission 10 to 0 on January 24, 2019. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by amending a specific plan on properties located at 1810, 1812, and 1814 Broadway Avenue and 106 and 108 19th Avenue South at the north corner of the Broadway Avenue and 19th Avenue South intersection zoned SP 1.2 acres to permit a mixed-use development with a maximum of 355 multifamily residential units. Councilmember O'Connell. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All right, declare the public hearing open. Can I have a uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure? All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are in opposition to this measure. All right, seeing nobody in opposition, anybody in favor wish to speak? See some heads shaking. Uh, no one wishes to speak. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Right. So I got a motion to approve on second reading, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, council member. Uh, BL 2019 uh, 1531 by council member Sledge. He got through his babysitting duties. Approve with conditions, disapprove without. <coughs> Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RA to SB zoning for property located at 2080 12th Avenue South at the intersection of 12th Avenue South and Bate Avenue, 0.63 acres to permit 10 multifamily residential units. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and thank you to all the members for your very kind words and actions over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, with that, I would like to open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. Uh, can I have a show of hands of those who are in here in favor of the measure? Seeing none, show of hands of those who are here in, uh, who are opposed to the measure. I see one hand opposed. Um, Ma'am, would you like to speak? So come to, come to the microphone, introduce yourself, address, and you got three minutes to speak. Hi, my name is Edwina McNeil Saman, and I live at 1105 Bay Avenue. I live right next door to, um, to this property, which is currently a, ch well, a church and has been for a very long time. Um, our neighborhood, um, as I'm sure you already know, recently underwent an overlay. Um, it doesn't extend to, I guess, the properties that face 12th Avenue, but I can imagine that if this property is developed, that it is not going to completely face 12th Avenue, and that there would be uh, traffic issues and um, issues for our street, because we, we are um, a little community on Bate Avenue. And so I, I do oppose this. Uh, we, on the other side of the church, we just recently went from a single family home to a four residential unit structure. And now um, right adjacent to it, you're proposing to put 10 additional um, units. So where there was a church and a house, there are gonna be 14 residential units. And I just feel like it's not in line with what the neighborhood has said already with regard to you know how we'd like to develop this area. And, you know, and like I said, my home is right next door and I'm concerned. I'm concerned about traffic, um, you know, noise, um, issues that come with having, you know, that many um, residential units right next to me, and also how it may affect my property value. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'll move approval on second with a brief explanation if that's all right. All right. Um, I'd love to speak with you after this bill um, just for a moment. The bill, the property in question is on 12th Avenue South Corridor. When we did the uh, Waverly Belmont conservation overlay a few years ago, the neighborhood part of Part of that negotiation was the overlay went basically to about two properties short of the 12 Avenue South corridor. Um, so this is on the corridor. This is um, Southside Community Church. Um, and part of the negotiations with this particular property and actually something that planning worked with the uh, applicant on as well was reducing the height down as it came into the neighborhood. So it is height restricted throughout the property and it's actually further height restricted coming into the property, and I can go into those numbers in more detail, and, and we can chat about that as well. There's some other restrictions on it as well as far as use. Um, what I'd ask the council is if uh, you don't mind passing this on second, I'll speak with my constituent, and uh, we'll come back in a couple weeks on third. All right, so the motion is to uh, pass on second, properly seconded. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Thank you, Council Member. Um, BL 2019-1532, uh, this is by Council Member Withers, approved by the Planning Commission 10-0 on 124 2019 ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from IR to MULA zoning for property located at 820 South 5th Street at the northwest corner of Crutcher Street and South 5th Street. It's 0.13 acres. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing. Please. I declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in support of this measure. I see one way in the back. Uh, show of hands of those who are in opposition of this measure. I see none. Uh, those in favor wish to speak? No. Uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Withers. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right. Uh, motion to approve. Probably seconded. Back to you. Just want to thank the applicant who contacted me a, a good while back about this property. Um, glad to have any kind of new investment along the South Fifth Corridor. It's uh, very close to the Envision Casey area, but there is quite a bit of privately owned land around there, a lot of which is industrially zoned today. I'm very happy to See, whatever, whatever developments the applicant can bring with uh, a mixed-use base zoning on that site, any, any investment in that particular quadrant of the district um, is an improvement. Look forward to seeing what uh, comes forward and uh, just renew my motion to approve. All right, so I've got a motion to approve on second reading. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Uh, BL 2019-1533 by Council Member Scott Davis and Council Member Anthony Davis. This was approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10-0 on 124 in 2019. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 311 Gatewood Avenue, approximately 430 feet east of Meridian Street, it's 0.17 acres to prevent all uses of the RS5 zoning district and a detached accessory, accessory dwelling unit. So I'm going to go to Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I will open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. Can I have a show of hands of those who are in support of this measure? See a hand in the back. Show of hands of those who are in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve on second reading. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, we're on BL 2019-1534 by Council Member O'Connell. Approved with conditions, disapproved without. By the Planning Commission 7-0 on 2-14-2019. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RM20 to SP zoning for property located at 1113 Sigler Street and 801 12th Avenue South at the northwest corner of Hawkins Street and 12th Avenue South, 2.9 acres to permit a mixed-use development with a maximum of 270 multifamily residential units and up to 9,000 square feet of non-residential uses. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing. Can I declare the public hearing open? Can I have a show of hands of those who are in support of this measure? Thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, would those in favor wish to speak? All right, seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval of the brief comment. I was getting some important information. Uh, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. What did you ask for? I asked for uh, approval and a brief comment. All right. So um, uh, I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, this. Let me just say, I mean, with those that show of hands of a, approval um, and the performance of this project at the Planning Commission, this one is once again, I think, a testament to the strength. Uh, and commitment of residents of the Edge Hill community. Um, earlier in the term, probably measuring back now in terms of years, uh, Park Center, one of the uh, integral nonprofits in, in Nashville's ecosystem, uh, catering to a vulnerable population, approached me. They had a site on the very corner of the residential portion of Edge Hill, uh, just opposite the interstate from the Gulch. They, they knew that this, from a consolidation standpoint, from their strategic asset standpoint, they had some better opportunities. Um, 
and when a development group first came to town looking at this, or not first came to town, but first came to the neighborhood to look at this, uh, they proposed a project that I think neighbors looked at, reviewed, chewed on, and said, this is too much. And the uh, neighborhood stood their ground uh, to the credit of the development team. They worked uh, tirelessly with the community to find something at a scale that was that the neighborhood felt was appropriate, but that would also uh, serve the project goals. And so, to me, I count this as a as a triple win. Right, this is something where we get a nonprofit to advance its own interests, uh, to continue to serve the community that they're serving. We see a neighborhood that is continuing to move forward in protecting its own interests, but not standing up in, in just abject opposition to any development. And we see a development project that ultimately is gonna fit into the context of the neighborhood and succeed in its own right. So I really am grateful to the community for their investment in this, to the development team, uh, is, is their commitment to the community, and I wish Park Center well in, in their next step. So thank you, everyone who participated in this process, and I'd like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you, Council Member. I'm glad your constituents chewed on this measure. Uh, I'm gonna go to Council Member Mendez. Uh, thanks. I serve um, on the board of Park Center, and so we'll be asked to uh, be marked as abstaining. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Um, anybody else uh, wishing to talk on this? Seeing none, we are on a motion to approve, uh, which has been properly seconded. We are on BL 2019-1534. Because there's an abstention, uh, we're going to have to go on the board. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would open the machines. Everybody voting who wishes to vote. All right. Madam Clerk, if you will close the machines, take the vote. Twenty seven in favor, two abstentions. All right, thank you. So um, BL twenty nineteen fifteen thirty four passes on second reading. Right, we're on BL 2019-1535 uh, by Council Member Murphy. Um, this was referred to the Planning Commission, but I understand, I think, that it has now been approved by the Planning Commission. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by applying a neighborhood conservation overlay district to various properties along Kenner Avenue, zoned R10 and SP, and partially located within a plan unit development overlay district. It's approximately 18.74 acres. Council Member Murphy. Thank you. Will you remind me, do I need to move the substitute first or open the public hearing first? Open the public hearing first and then we'll deal with the substitute after. Wonderful. I would love to open the public hearing. Please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. We're on 2019-1535. Show of hands of those who are here in support of the measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Was somebody hide, hiding behind the podium? I don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. And I declare the public hearing closed. Back to you, Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. With that, I would like to move the substitute. All right. We have a motion to move the substitute properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. And I um, guarantee you that everybody back there still supports the substitute. And with that, I ask for your approval and move it forward. All right. So I got a motion to uh, approve the substitute properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the substitute is now before us. The substitute is approved. Uh, Council Member Murphy, we're back to you. I'm going to approve the substitute on second reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Please uh, approve on the second reading. All right. So I got a motion to approve on second reading. This is the substitute properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the substitute is adopted on second reading. We're on BL 2019-1536. This is by Council Member Hastings and Haywood. Approved with conditions, disapproved without. By the Planning Commission 6-0 on 2-14-2019. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS10 to SP zoning 
for properties located at 1908 and 1910 County Hospital Road and 1917 South Hamilton Road. Southeast corner of John Mallet Drive and County Hospital Road is 1.53 acres. Permit 15 multifamily residential units. Council Member Haywood. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. Those who are here who are in opposition to the measure. Seeing none, would those in favor wish to speak? Yes. Oh, okay. Come on up to the microphone. Uh, name, address, you got three minutes. My name is Keenan Ewing. I live at uh, 415 Church Street currently, but I own the property at 1917 South Hamilton Road. Uh, been a long road. Um, this is my business partner here, my mother. Um, she's been, worked diligently as I travel a lot, and I'd just like to express my appreciation to the council for DaCosta Hastings and Councilwoman uh, Haywood for meeting with us numerous times and, and helping us to try and push this through. Thanks to the Planning Commission, they, they dealt with us on numerous occasions, and um, I'll shut up so you guys can close this and we can move on. Um, uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. <laughs> if you would give me your uh, name and address, My name and is you are Lynn welcome Ewing, to talk us off. And I'm the mom of this proud young man. I do not live in that district. I live down the street. But as he says, he travels a lot, so I've taken up the fight in the mantle. Uh, we have our architect, Harold Thompson. We also would like to thank very publicly for his stick to itness to get this thing this far. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thanks, Dr. Uh, DeCosta Hastings. And we just want to move to move this thing forward. Thank you, guys. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Back to you, Councilmember Haywood. Have we ever seen a mother son duo? I like that. I'm just down for that. At this time, I'd like to move for approval. <laughs> so I got a motion to approve properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Hurt? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to know uh, from Mr. Ewing, you know, it was said once upon a time that you made the best Kool-Aid in town. Is that still true? Because that's, that's going to depend on how come, I vote. Come so, check it out. Come check it out. We got you. <laughs> All right. So the public hearing was closed, but that's okay. All right. All right. So I got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion about the property or Kool-Aid, whichever is first? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. BL 2019-1537 by Council Member Scott Davis and Council Member Anthony Davis, disapproved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on January 10, 2019. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 327 uh, Gatewood Avenue, approximately 436 feet west of Lishy Avenue. It's 0.18 acres. Council Member Anthony Davis. There you are. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll reiterate that I'm handling these for Council Member Scott Davis tonight, and I will open this public hearing. Well, let's see. We're going to have to see the slides first. I'm going to go to the planning yes. table. Mr. Layman. Okay, this is a request to rezone a property, one property from RS5 to R6 zoning. It's 0.18 acres in the uh, Highland Heights area. It's on the, this is the property shown in red. It's on the north side of Gatewood Avenue, just uh, west of Lishy Avenue. Planning Commission recommended disapproval. And this is the property currently zoned RS5, which allows for single family only. And the proposal is to go to R6 that would allow for single family and duplex. It's in the R1 area of the, the neighborhood maintenance policy of the Highland Heights study area that was adopted in June of 2018. Um, this is it. This shows the R1 area, which primarily calls for single family and does not support duplex zonings. So for that reason, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval. All right. Thank you. Okay. Back to you, Council Member Davis. You're recognized. Now we'll formally open the public hearing. Thank I you. declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Show of hands of, the, of those folks who are here opposed to the measure. Seeing none, would those in favor wish to speak? Okay, come on up to the microphone, state your name, um, address, and you've got uh, three minutes. 
My name is Jeff Kendig, uh, 1111 McGavick Pike, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I just wanted to let the council know before you vote on this that we spoke with the Neighborhood Association before we ever brought it to Councilmember Davis. We have put a deed restriction on the property that requires them, the, the properties be attached. We have put a deed restriction that requires a traditional house that would fit the context of the neighborhood. <clears throat> I think you're all very familiar with the Highland Heights neighborhood. Ashanti Davis was here earlier. If uh, the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association was against it, there would probably be more of them than us. So I would uh, respectfully ask that you uh, approve this and uh, thank you for your time and uh, consideration. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, back to you, Councilmember Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On behalf of Scott Davis, I will move approval. Okay, get a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on, did I hear a no? Did hear a no. All right, so uh, we need to go on the board. Um, Madam Clerk, if you will um, open up Open up the machines. We are voting on BL 2019-1537. Okay, again, we're voting on BL 2019-1537 by council members uh, Scott Davis and Anthony Davis. All right, Madam Clerk. If you would um, close the machines, take the vote. 20 in favor, three against, five abstentions. All right, so this measure passes on second reading. All right. All right, we're on BL 2019-1538 by Council Member Pridemore. Uh, this bill was disapproved by the Planning Commission 6 to 0 on 2-14-2019. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by changing from RS 7.5 to CS zoning for properties located at 106, 108, 110 MacArthur Drive, Northeast Corner of MacArthur Drive and State Route 45. It's 0.85 acres. Council Member Pridemore. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I think we have some slides from planning. That's correct. Planning, you recognized. Okay, uh, this is a request to rezone 0.85 acres from residential RS 7.5 to commercial services CS property is shown in red on the north side of State Route 45 um, it's just west of Myatt Drive along MacArthur uh, Drive this is the proper close-up of the property property shown in blue here currently it's owned RS 7.5 this falls within a neighborhood evolving policy, which only allows for residential and not commercial uses. There was a policy request change, to change the policy here that was denied at the Planning Commission. Um, so for that reason, um, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval of this rezoning request to go to commercial, finding that the, the commercial corridor was Myatt Drive and uh, they did not recommend that the, that the policy be changed or that the commercial zoning sort of bleed over to MacArthur, Dr MacArthur Drive. So for that reason, the commission recommended disapproval. Okay, thank you. Council Member Pridemore. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Can I show a hands of those who are here in support of the measure? Okay, show a hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none, those who are in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Back to you, Council Member Pridemore. Uh, I don't know if this is a irregular or not, but uh, I'd like to make a statement, but I'd like to use uh, the planning's, um, uh, one of their slides, if I may. All right, why don't we get a motion to approve. I move, move for approval. Move to approve or properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Pridemore. Uh, if you would, can you go back to the one that, uh, the overhead view of the corner? One more, the one with the cars next there. As you can see, that's the corner where, where I'm talking about. It's directly behind it is a car lot. That is on the corner of MacArthur and, and, and um, uh, State Route 45 and Old Hickory Boulevard, which is totally um, 
Uh, I'm not going to go in, into a lot of detail tonight. I just want to give you some idea that it's in a much highly uh, automobile corridor that with that lot being an automobiles lot, they're wanting to change. Those two houses have been, uh, uh, have been negotiated and sold and they're wanting to put a, uh, a, uh, a racetrack, a new concept of a racetrack service versus food, food court. So with that, I move for approval. All right, thank you, council member. I've got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on 2019-1538. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, you adopt on second reading. Bill 2019-1539 by Council Member Glover. Referred to the Planning Commission, Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, the Zoning Ordinance of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, by changing from RS-15 to MULA zoning for property located at 4170 Central Pike, approximately 540 feet southwest of South New Hope Road, 4.13 uh, acres. Council Member Glover. Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. I believe this was this was approved by the Planning Commission. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. So I've got a. Um, so I'm going to declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in support of this measure. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody here in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve on second reading, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Thank you, Council Member Glover. Uh, BL 2019-1540 uh, by Council Members Blaylock and Bedney, approved by the Planning Commission 6-0 to zero on February 14th, Valentine's Day 2019, Ordinance Amending 17.36 and 17.40 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to creating a corridor design overlay district. Council Member Blaylock. Thank you. Open the public hearing, please. Okay. Declare the public hearing open. Can I have a show of hands of those who are here in support of the measure? Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Blaylock. Thank you, move for approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve on second reading, properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Anybody opposed? Um, the motion passes on second reading. This is BL 2019-1540. BL 2019-1541 by Council Member Kendall. Approved with conditions, disapproved without, by the Planning Commission 6 to 0 on February 14, 2019. An ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from CS and IR to SP zoning for properties located at 500, 502, 504, 506, and 508 28th Avenue North and 510 27th Avenue North, approximately 145 feet southwest of 27th Avenue North, 1.55 acres to permit an office building. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the uh, public hearing, please. All right. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in support of this measure. All right. Thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, anybody wishing to speak in favor? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Kendall. Move approval. Okay. I got a motion to approve on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Thank you, Council Member. That completes um, bills and resolutions on public hearing. We are now on the consent agenda uh, resolutions. The consent agenda resolutions and also um, resolutions will take up the consent agenda first. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to read the resolution, resolution numbers on the consent agenda. If there are any items that need to come off the consent agenda, if you will, let me know. Um, again, uh, these are items on the consent agenda. Got resolution RS 2019-16-56, 2019-16-56, 1657, 1657, 1658, 1669, 1665, 1666, 1668, and 1669. 
Anything else that needs to be bumped off the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna read uh, the captions on all the measures um, on um, the consent agenda. Resolution RS 2019 1654 by Vercher. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Denison County and Pictometry International Corporation to, divide, to provide digital ortho, photo, and oblique images, maintenance, and other related services for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Denison County. Uh, RS 2019 1656 by Virtue and Syracuse. Resolution approving amendment number one to a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Capital View Joint Venture concerning the construction of public, construction of public park improvements and the donation of a parcel of property. Resolution RS 2019 1657. Uh, Council Members Wiener and Bedney. Resolution approving agreements between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Harpeth Valley Utility District for water and sewer lines related to utility services at the Ford Ice Center in Bellevue. Resolution RS 2019 1658 by Virtue and Bedney. Resolution accepting a hazard mitigation grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Military, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Department of Water and Sewerage Services and authorizing the acquisition and removal of two houses located in the Whites Creek Floodway and Floodplain in Davidson County. Resolution RS 2019-1659 by Vercher. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Mary Moore Pomjgo against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $5,589.56. The said amount be paid out of the self-insured liability fund, RS 2019-1660, also by Council Member Vercher. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Victoria Ezokoa against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $10,000 set amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. Resolution RS 2019-1661 by virtue of resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Isaiah 58 Inc. doing business as spring back recycling for the collection and recycling of mattresses, box springs, and carpet. RS 2019-1662 by Vercher. Resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Nashville Public Works Department to support the implementation of the 2015 through 2025 Solid Waste, Solid Waste and Materials Management Plan to increase materials management education and outreach to the public. Resolution RS 2019-1663 by Swope and Bedney. Resolution amending ordinance number BL 2018-1059 to authorize the Metropolitan Go Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easement and to accept new sanitary sewer main and any associated easements for five additional properties located on Nolensville Pike. Resolution RS 2019 1664 by Virtue and Sledge. Resolution approving a sub recipient grant agreement by and between the Metropolitan Department of Housing uh, Development and Housing Agency and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Social Services Homeless Impact Division for one time payments of first month's rent and security utility deposits on behalf of homeless persons obtaining housing through various campaigns. Resolution RS 2019 1665 by Council Member Virtue. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide the Tennessee Breast and Cervical Screening Program to offer individualized assistance to clients and to facilitate timely access to quality screening and diagnostics. Resolution RS 2019-1666 by Virtue. Resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson, Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide the Community Health Access and Navigation Tennessee program to deliver comprehensive care coordination services to eligible families and children. Resolution RS 2019-1668 by Roberts, Rosenberg, and O'Connell. Resolution requesting the Tennessee General Assembly to enact legislation observing daylight savings time year round and further requesting the United States Congress to authorize such observation. Resolution RS 2019-1669 by Council Member Henderson. A resolution to bring awareness to the emerald ash borer epidemic's impending negative impact on Davidson County's native ash trees and urban tree canopy. Those are all the measures on the consent agenda. Anything that needs to be bumped? All right, seeing none, then we're gonna take committee reports. I'm gonna to go to budget and finance, Council Member Furcher. 
Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance uh, recommended approval on RS 2019-1654, 940 against on RS 2019-1656, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, and 62. Budget and Finance recommended approval 1040 against on RS 2019-1664. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 11-4-0 against. And on RS 2019-1666, I'm sorry, 65, 66, 16, 66, 16, 69. It's a tongue twister, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 12-4-0 against. All right, good job with the tongue twisters. Uh, Council Member Murphy, have you got planning and zoning? Potentially. Resolution 2019-1657, 10 favor, zero against. Resolution 2019-1658, 10 favor, zero against. Resolution 2019-1663, 10 in favor, zero against. Very good. Anything else? I don't think so. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Proud to report that the entire uh, public works agenda this evening was on consent. Uh, we considered RS 2019-1657 uh, and voted seven in favor, zero against to approve. Uh, we considered RS 2019-1658, seven in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1661, seven in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1662, seven in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1663, seven in favor, zero against. And RS 2019-1669, where we voted seven in favor, zero against. Then for bills on second reading, uh, it was exciting. We had two more members of the committee join. Oh, we're not to that yet. Yes, we're on just on resolutions. Thank you're you. Jumping, so, you're jumping way ahead. There was so much consent, I got carried away. All right, thank you. We'll come back to you when it's time for a second reading. Really looking forward to that. All right, so am I. Uh, Council Member Kendall, uh, education. <coughs> yes, <coughs> Vice Mayor, on RS 2019-1667, uh, the Education Committee voted seven for and zero against. I think, it's, I think we're looking at, hold on, 1669. 16, on here. Uh, 1667 uh, was not on the consent account agenda, but 1669 is. Okay, I don't have the, is that for uh, Education Committee? Education okay. Committee. Hold on, I have it here. 740 again. All right, thank you. All right, Health Hospitals and Social Services, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Health Hospitals and Social Services for 1664, uh, bill forward in favor. Zero against, zero not voting. 1665, four in favor, zero against, and zero not voting. 1666, uh, four in favor, zero against, and zero not voting. And I wanted to thank my vice chair, Council Member Pulley, for doing such an awesome job in leading the committee meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Syracuse, Parks, Library, and Recreation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Parks, Library, and Arts considered 1656 and recommended approval 840 against, and also considered 1669 and voted uh, 840 against. Thank All right. You. Thank you. And now, finally, Council Member Lee. Yes, sir. Um, RS 2819. Uh, 1668, the Rules Committee voted approval 7 to 0. And with that, all of the consent, all of the reports are in on the consent agenda. And except for the ones that you took off at the very beginning, I would like to move approval for those items. That's good. You got a motion to approve on items on the consent agenda, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt uh, you, the sir. items on the consent agenda. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go back. We're going to go back to items that were not on the consenta, uh, consent agenda. A resolution RS 2019 1617 by Council Members Rosenberg and Cooper. Um, a resolution providing amendments to the Charter of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville in Davidson County, Tennessee, in accordance with Article 19, Section 19.01 thereof, and setting forth a brief description of each amendment to be placed on the ballot. 
Councilmember Rosenberg, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee report, please. All right, uh, Councilmember Blaylock. Yes, so we voted six four zero against to approve as amended and re-refer back to the Charter Revision Commission. And that is for amendment to amendment A, amendment to amendment B, and then amendment to amendment C, amendment D, any, e. all of them. You get a lot of amendments. All right, I'm going to go Thank back you. to Council Member Rosenberg to try to explain everything that's going on. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so um, when this is all done, I'll be moving to defer and re-refer to uh, the committee like our uh, committee chair just said. Um, but first of all, um, so we've been working through the language on this and the surrounding issues since February. Um, I have an amendment tonight that modifies the language of the charter amendments uh, in question. Um, just as a reset, um, the vote on the resolution will occur at the next meeting. Uh, we'll be voting on each amendment separately. And what we'll be voting on is not to approve any policy changes, but to on whether to give Nashville voters a voice on each issue. Um, prior to that, we'll be um, this will go to the Charter Review Commission and will also go back to the committee. Um, with this amendment, we'll have five charter amendments. The first two of them address ranked choice voting, and this cleans up some language and simplifies the ballot language. Uh, amendment C by Council Members Cooper and Mendez speak to some debt disclosures in the budget. Amendment D by Council Member Roten addresses the composition of the Planning Commission. And Amendment E by Council Lady Blaylock modifies our school board vacancy language to reflect the process that's mandated by state law. And um, hopefully uh, the, amend the sponsors of these amendments will have an opportunity to speak on those tonight. Um, speak, not vote. So, um, and, and I, so uh, go ahead, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I look forward to any discussion on it and hearing more on these amendments. And first, I'd like to move approval of the amendment, please. Approval of the resolution to get it in front of us. Let's uh, get. We, I'm sorry. Uh, approval of the amendment to the. Okay. The, am the amendment to the resolution. All right. Yeah. So I've got a motion to approve uh, an amendment to resolution RS 2019 16 1617, properly seconded. You want to go back or are you ready to vote? I'm good. I don't know if the sponsors want to speak before we vote on this or afterwards. Okay. So we have several amendments to the amendment. Okay. So let's vote on the amendment to get it in front of us. Any discussion on the amendment? All we're doing is getting the amendment in front of us so we can start amending it, correct? All right. Uh, Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Uh, I guess I'm thoroughly confused. I hear the legal director over here being confused about what we're doing also. Um, I thought there were multiple amendments to amendments. I don't, what is the amendment that has been moved? All right, uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Jamison to explain. You requested approval of the resolution so that it's on the floor before you, and now I assume he's going to go back to Councilmember Rosenberg first for his amendment to Amendment A and Amendment B. Right, but I, I heard a motion to approve the amendment and a second to that, but that's meant, not a thing, right? I believe he meant the resolution. Ah, the resolution. I, which he's referring to as the chartered amendment. I thought that the amendments that we had that dealt with the changes to A and B and C and put on D and E were a single amendment to the resolution. I think you're going to want to do those separately. Okay. All right. So I think um, let's go back. Okay. That's okay. So we're going to, uh, it's a motion to approve the resolution. I'd like to make a motion to amend Amendment A. But uh, at this point, we don't have Amendment A in front of us. So what we're trying to do is get the resolution, I believe, in front of us and then start amending it. Okay. Well, the motion then is going to be to defer and re defer one, one meeting and move it to... Uh, yeah. In, in the end, but do you... Um, uh, so, Council Member, do you want to get the amendments on tonight and then re, re and then defer and re-refer it back? So all we're doing is just, it's just a motion to approve the resolution properly seconded, and then we're going to start taking up the amendments that will go to the resolution. Okay. I move That's whatever you just said. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, so there's been a motion to approve the resolution, RS 2019-1670, 
properly seconded, now we're ready for, to start taking up the individual amendments to that resolution. Um, we're not going to pass the resolution tonight. You want to defer and then send it back. Okay, okay, so we're on the resolution, ready to hear amendments. Thank you. I move uh, the amendment to Amendment A, please. All right, so uh, I got an, uh, an amendment to Amendment A. Uh, it's been properly seconded. I'm going to go to Council Member Mendez. Go ahead. You're recognized. So the confusion here is that this resolution is made up of certain amendment, proposed amendments to the charter, and the first one is called Amendment A. And so he, uh, and, and there's an Amendment B and so forth. And so the body of the resolution has a thing called Amendment A in it, and he's moving to amend the Amendment A portion of the resolution. Okay, got it. Now I'm clear. All right, so I have, so uh, we are on your amendment to Amendment A, which has been properly seconded. Now we're ready for discussion. Councilmember Rosenberg? Um, this cleans up a couple of small language issues in it and also simplifies the ballot language. All right, sounds good. Councilmember Swope? Yeah, I need a scorecard. All right. Sorry. And, and I just wanted to make that public that I'm incredibly confused here. I think <laughs> I'm following along the bouncing ball here as we go, but, but you are deferring tonight. Correct. So okay. might I suggest that between now and when this comes back to us again, you actually draft out a scorecard? It won't be needed. Tonight's the only night with the confusing part. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to look to Mr. Jamison, but I believe I know what we're doing now. Uh, we are on resolution RS 2019 1617, which is ultimately going to be deferred and re referred back to the Charter Revision Committee. Um, we are on the resolution. In the resolution, there are certain things called amendments Amendment A, Amendment B, Amendment C. So we are now on an amendment to that first amendment. So we're actually amending the resolution which contains amendments. Is that the best way to explain it? I believe so. All right, thank you. All right, so, um, so um, Council Member Swope, you clear? I just found it in the amendment packet. All right, that's good. All right, okay, so um, we have a, a motion to adopt amendment to Amendment A. Mr. Jamison, do you want to explain what the amendment does? So the uh, Amendment A that was originally uh, part of the uh, charter resolution would have allowed and would allow for ranked choice voting for mayor, vice mayor, council member at large, and district council member. There are amendments to that Amendment A, and that is what you are voting on now. These are, I would say, relatively minor housekeeping amendments. So are we voting on one amendment to Amendment A, or we, do we have several before us? One amendment to Amendment A. It's, it's grouped together as A and B, but I think you're, you'll have a little more clarity if you vote on the amendment to Amendment A and then the amendment to Amendment B. Okay, Councilmember Rosenberg, just to make sure that we're all clear. Would you describe, without the amendment, with, without the amendment to Amendment A, again, this is Amendment A, what does Amendment A do in the resolution? So this resolution has on it five potential charter amendments, and then we have our legislative amendments, which is what we're talking about doing tonight. Charter Amendment A, both with and without any amending, implements or gives the people the choice to implement ranked choice voting for metropolitan elections only. Okay, so um, there is a motion on the floor to approve the amendments to Amendment A, their housekeeping amendments. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion, we're voting on amendments to Amendment A. Any discussion? Uh, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to amend these on the floor. No, I guess that's a bad idea. Never mind. So I'm going to turn off Council Member O'Connell's uh, microphone. Thank you. All right. All right. So we are voting on amendments to am amendment to Amendment A. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the amendments to Amendment A are adopted. 
Okay, back to you, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's do it again. All right. Uh, I would like to move the amendment to Charter Amendment B, please. Oh. It also is a basically a housekeeping amendment. Uh, amendment B will um, implement rank choice, would give people the option of implementing rank choice voting only for special elections for vice mayor and district council. All right, so um, there's a motion to amend Amendment B in the resolution. Properly seconded, any discussion? Council Member Allen. Technically, this is not on the amendment to Amendment B, but it's on Amendment B. Can I still ask the question? Why, certainly. Thank you very much. So are these are these sort of either or, or one could go without the other, or they need to be together, or how, how, how are you packaging those, A and B? My intention would be that if the council votes to put Amendment A on the ballot to withdraw Amendment B. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, council member. Uh, council member Gilmore. Thank you, vice mayor. And so I have a question now, why is it either or? If you could explain that, why are you offering up an either or if you continue to amend them versus just offering one? It, it would be prob problematic if the voters were to approve both amendments because they compete with each other. So we'll need, yeah, since Amendment A applies to more elections than, I'd like to defer to uh, Councilman O'Connell on this. He won't be a smart uh, this time. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, uh, I've got my hand on the trigger. I can turn off your microphone. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd be happy to use Councilmember Allen's mic if needed. Um, in this case, uh, members might remember last year, only one amendment made it out of the charter amendment package offered, or did not make it out of the, the charter amendment package offered to voters. And I think it was actually a result of some confusion on the floor. Um, further work, so basically I think where Council Member Rosenberg is, is, has led this discussion in, in reconsidering it uh, in looking through everything from updated election equipment, conversations with uh, folks across the state of Tennessee is to say, could we potentially offer uh, this option of ranked choice voting to all Nashvilleans just across the board for all elections? or if this body decides not to offer that option to the voters across the county, uh, you know, kind of despite the, the overwhelming number of elections we had last year, could we offer a scaled back version to voters um, that is almost identical to what we kind of had procedural uh, confusion about last year, right? So there are basically two amendments. One is a little broader in scope. Um, that we could consider if that one fails, but people would have greater comfort with the other, we could again potentially offer voters that option. Um, and I think we'll, we'll, I think you'll find members speaking to which of these could be considered preferable next time, but that is the reason there are two competing amendments. All right, thank you, Council Member O'Connell. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you, that, that did clear up a little uh, bit. I guess I had a, a follow-up question, so what would be, I understand, I guess the, you're trying to see which one is more viable, but if it, the idea is if it's good for one, why wouldn't it be good for all? I guess that's what I'm, in, to give all persons a, a choice in all the elections versus some of the elections, why would we think one would be more viable than the other? I couldn't say it better myself, choose? Council Lady. I think that it's a great idea across all elections. <laughs> Yeah, well, we just, we have two competing, so I guess that's why I was, um, I guess I'm concerned about it. But we'll, I, I look forward to hearing more. The, the idea was that if the council turns out to not be comfortable with Amendment A, which I hope that everybody is, and I think is a good policy to move forward with, that we would have the fallback of Amendment B. Okay. Thank you. And sometimes the most obvious is not the most obvious, because just as, I guess, an at-large member, I'm like, What's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? All right, thank you. Council Member Mendez. Uh, just to take the other side of Councilman Rosenberg's uh, position, uh, what, what I've been saying in the committee meeting is that I'm more interested in B than A. Um, so far, I'm keeping an open mind, um, and, I, and I do think they should both be on the bill for consideration when we take a final vote. But so far, I've preferred B because 
Um, it is still a thing that hasn't really been tested in Tennessee. It's questionable legality in Tennessee so far, and B, with a smaller scope, um, would let the county experiment it, with it without going uh, all in on it. And But I have promised Councilman Rosenberg that I'm keeping an open mind and keep thinking about it to the end, but, but that's been the reason so far that he, I think, has wanted to keep both is because there's some voices, well, at least one, um, saying that uh, B is the one that's more interesting. Right, I go. I got to go to Council Member O'Connell first. Council Member, thank you, Mr. President. And just to clarify here, uh, since Council Member Gilmore kind of raised this line of inquiry, if if we actually, you know, if if through that discussion and we wind up passing Amendment A, uh, we would effectively then wind up withdrawing Amendment B. It would not be on the ballot for voters to consider. Right. I think what we would do is say, great. Uh, we will we'll present to voters Amendment A, uh, and therefore Amendment B will not be necessary. So I just want to make sure that that is clear, that in this either-or scenario, uh, we're not looking to say to voters, hey, pick one of these. We're saying within this body, uh, as we deliberate, which one of these is best positioned for the ballot for voters to consider about how we uh, save costs in elections. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Gilmore, back to you. Thank you. I would just like to thank uh, both of the council members for all of their um, hard work. And I, I think it's very important that we do uh, save money. I think that's very important. But I guess my, just as we deliberate as a body, kind of in-house, my concern would be, why would we want some of the elections to be messed up and not all of them <laughs> if we chose B versus A? So I just think that that's something to think about, too, in fairness. If we're going to do a sample, why are we choosing these particular ones? I mean, so it, to me, it presents a, a problem, but I, I do think it's something that can be worked through. I think um, ranked choice is, is important. It's a new idea. It's innovative. But I do think we as a body, we probably need to look at both sides in terms of equity, I think, as the council member just stated, because if we use that logic, I, I, don't, I don't know that I feel comfortable saying, okay, we're going to do a sample here, and if it goes well, good, which would be great, but if it doesn't, it's these specific races that we have chosen versus all of them, which gives them the opportunity to be botched if we use that logic, and so I hope we'll just continue to think about it. Okay. Anybody else in the queue? Council Mayor Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you, Council Lady Gilmore. Um, I would contend that it's not a risky proposition at all. Um, it's, it's a system that's used throughout the country, um, including in a lot of southern states with a lot of success up north, out west, uh, and in the Midwest as well. Um, I think the concern is about um, that Councilman Mendez is uh, sharing. He's sharing it with you right now, so I won't elaborate on it. Um, <laughs> But um, it's worth noting that the difference between Amendment A and Amendment B does not occur until 2023, since ranked choice voting would not be used in a regular election for another four years. Um, so I don't see any risk there. Either we'll be able to use it. The Election Commission knows how to use this. The machines support it. And, and uh, so hopefully we'll be able to implement this. Um, with that, I'll just renew my uh, amendment to Charter Amendment B. Okay. Just to remind everybody, we are voting on an amendment to Charter Amendment B. It has been properly seconded. No one else is in the queue. All in favor of the amendment to Amendment B, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. Back to you, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll uh, yield to Councilman Cooper or Councilman Mendez on Amendment C. Councilmember Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, um, Councilman Rosenberg and Vice Mayor. I um, want to thank my co-sponsor, Bob Mendez, and Margaret Darby, the legal department, the finance department, our bond council, and Mike Jamison um, for the current version of Amendment B, FC, which is about requiring performance metrics and debt uh, metric reporting. All right. So um, you want to move that amendment to, like to Amendment C. C? Okay. Got a, a motion to amend Amendment Number C, properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, we are on Amendment to Amendment C. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 
All right, Council Member Rosenberg, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Yield to Councilman Roten on D. Council Member Roten, it's your turn. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, my Amendment D is fairly simple. I asked uh, our attorney, Jameson, if he would help me craft uh, some changes to the um, planning commission to where the selection of the members would have a representation throughout the entire county. And uh, Mr. Jameson and his able staff came up with a way for us to have the mayor appoint those. The mayor will continue to appoint, but it will be from separate areas of the county, and if uh, I could get our Attorney Jameson to explain it so I don't screw it up, uh, if you don't mind. Mr. Jameson. The Planning Commission, uh, by charter, consists of 10 members, two of those members, one is the mayor and one is the council representative currently, Councilman Bedney. The other eight are appointed by the mayor. In response to Councilman Roten's concerns for geographic diversity, this would have those eight members have one of them appointed uh, from one of seven districts. Uh, the, one of the members would have to be from one of the seven districts, each continuing to serve four-year terms. Um, of the eight mayoral appointees, at least one from, would have to occur from those seven districts. The seven districts are themselves, as defined in the amendment, uh, comprised of five council districts each, uh, contiguous council districts. The amendment does make the express provision that in the event of redistricting following the, consent, following the census exercise, those districts can be altered, and that has been the practice with respect to uh, school board districts as well. Uh, the mayor, in implementing this, would, to, would continue to appoint planning district, uh, planning commission members uh, as current members expire. Uh, by the planning districts created until they were filled and a uh, diversified commission uh, resulted. Back to you, Council Member Roden. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, ultimately, I think what the reason for this is is that I have seen that in my area of the county, Hermitage, Old Hickory, uh, I looked other parts of the county, uh, Jolton, Goodlettsville, Bellevue, Antioch, there were no planning commissioners from those areas and have not been planning commissioners for those areas for some time. I believe that this county deserves representation for everyone, especially on the planning commission. Not everything that goes before the planning commission comes to this body. A lot of things, especially neighborhoods out in the areas where we have land, do not go come to this body. They are just go to the planning commission and they get approved. A lot of times they get approved without anybody that's on that planning commission actually knowing anything about the area that they're approving that neighborhood for. So this is for diversity, geographical diversity on the Planning Commission. I know the Planning Commission came to me and they were concerned about how this would be done. I told them if we put it on the bill tonight and I'm going to, um, between now and then, hopefully get them a little more comfortable with this, work with Mr. Jamison if there's some language that they are uncomfortable with, and hopefully get everybody comfortable. But I hope everyone on the council can see what I'm trying to do. And so um, I would hope for a positive vote on this amendment. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, when I saw this, uh, I am speaking in support of this uh, amendment being uh, considered. The reason uh, being is when I saw this uh, amendment, I was intrigued by the uh, reason behind it. So I did a little uh, research on current uh, Metro Planning Commissioners. Uh, based on the district, exclude uh, mayor's representative and uh, our council representative. So that leaves eight uh, council uh, planning commissioners. So one of which uh, from District 19, uh, next one, District 1, uh, next one, District 25, next one, District 6, District 19, uh, District 24, District 27, District 19, District 8. So what it's break down to, the area break down to seven area that represent a one from a Jolton, North Nashville area. Five commission member from downtown core, District 5, 6, 7, 8, 19. And zero from Hermitage and Old Hickory area. Zero from uh, 16, 17, 18, 21, 25, like a midtown area. 
one member from District 5, uh, which is uh, north, north, southeast, District 4, 26, 27, and 34. One from District 6 that represent uh, District 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, and 35, my area, uh, you know, uh, West Nashville area. Zero from uh, Area 7, that is District 28, 29, 31, 32, 33, that is York area. So as much as, you know, we have development happening every corner of our area, so I think it's worth thinking because, you know, some uh, member who live, commissioner, live in North Nashville, not necessarily knowing the detail, the uh, route and, you know, development and what's happening in the Anioc area. So if, you know, some commissioner want really, you know, deep dive and consider some development in Anioc area, it's an uh, advantage to have a uh, commissioner who really understand that area, such as uh, Hermitage area as well. So I am in support of this uh, amendment being uh, introduced in here. So between now and next, uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting. I uh, encourage everybody to kind of think and consider this amendment. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, stand in support. I think as a, a district council member serving before and, and understanding now, the more people that you have from diverse areas, we have more parity and better development in our city. And I think Council Member Dow used to talk about this for a long time, so I'm surprised I didn't see her name on this bill as well, but saying that we need to spread it out a little bit more. And I think that this is a great um, addition and you can definitely count on my support, and I think it will influence the way that our development looks and just understanding maybe the patterns of development and how they develop. So thank you so much for bringing this forth. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pardue. Call for question, please. Okay, the previous question's been called for. All in favor of the previous question, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on um, amendment. It's amendment to amendment D. This is uh, council members Roden's district. It's just, oh. amendment D. it's just amendment D. Okay, it's not in this district. It's just it's the planning commission stuff. It's just amendment D. It's been properly moved. We're voting on amendment D. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, okay. Back to you, council member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Amendment E belongs to Councilmember Blaylock. Yield to her. All right, Councilmember Blaylock, you're on Amendment E. Move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion to approve Amendment E properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Blaylock, for an explanation. This just cleans up our current law and makes it uh, the same as what the state overrides us. So it's just uh, cleaning up our current charter. Okay. Um, Okay, so we are on um, um, a motion to approve Amendment E. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment E is adopted. Council Member Rosenberg, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. We've got the heavy lifting behind us. Um, I would like to move to defer this one meeting and re-refer it to the Charter Review Committee, please. Okay, just to make sure we're all clear, we are on Resolution RS 2019-16-17. Um, the resolution was amended um, five times. Uh, it is now, the motion is to defer one meeting and re-refer it back to the Charter Revision Committee. Uh, properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, Mr. Um, Jamison, it might be um, good to um, break all this down uh, so that everybody can see exactly what, we're, what we did and where everything stands at this point for the next meeting, all right? And um, as Council Member Swope said, we need a scorecard. All right, RS 2019 1655 by Council Members Vercher, Withers, and Sledge. Resolution approving amendments to five grant contracts for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2017 965 between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and certain nonprofit organizations. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yesterday, the Budget and Finance Committee uh, had a, a, a robust discussion um, as it relates to this resolution, and as a result of that, um, uh, Chair Mendez will be uh, having a special meeting um, as it relates to affordable housing, the plan, and so forth um, in the city. Uh, budget and Finance recommended 12 4, 0 against, and one abstention. And with that, I need committee reports. All right, uh, Council Member Mendes, Ad Hoc Affordable Housing Committee. Our committee did not have a quorum, so no action was taken. All right, thank you, oh, Council. And also on this one, I need to be abstaining on this right. one, too. Thank you. Uh, personnel, uh, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Personnel Committee, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, met this afternoon and we considered this item, and we uh, recommended approval 540 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Bircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor, I move for approval. Okay, I got a, um, a motion to approve on resolution RS 2019-1655, properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, because we have an abstention, we are on the board. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would uh, open up the machines. We are voting on RS 2019-1655. Madam Clerk, looks like everybody's in. Uh, if you would um, close the machine to take the vote. 28 in favor, one abstention. All right. So uh, RS 2019-1655 uh, is passed. All right. We are now on uh, resolution RS 2019-1667 by Council Member Hurt. Uh, resolution encouraging the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and the Nashville Fire Department to recruit new officers and employees from local schools and institutions. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, uh, going to the Education Committee. I believe that's um, Council Member Kendall. Oh. Yes, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. The uh, Education Committee on RS 2019-1667. Voted seven for zero again. Okay, and um, Council Member um, Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. President. Public Safety voted four in favor, zero against, to defer by rule because we had to defer by rule. Okay, so we're, um, it's an automatic deferral by rule. Yes. All right, so Council Member Hurt, it's an automatic deferral by rule, so it'll be deferred one meeting. Right, I, okay. I'd like to, I, understand that, but I right. would like to make a, um, I'd like to move for a deferral for one meeting with a brief explanation. It's, uh, you can uh, have an explanation, but it's deferred automatically. Okay. So, so basically with this um, resolution, my intent is to um, ask the police department and fire departments to consider uh, recruiting young people from our local high schools and colleges and universities uh, to put them in a pipeline for um, making sure that they have some honorable jobs. And at the same time, possibly utilize some of our affordable housing like Envision Casey as incentives to consider th for them to consider making Nashville their home. And with that incentive, they can save uh, funds and put themselves on a great um, journey for success. And with that, some of that language was not in our resolution, and I have spoken to Mr. Jameson. We're going to work to make sure that the language is there so when we bring it back at the next meeting, it will be uh, in much better shape. All right. Thank, Thank you, you council member. So automatically deferred by rule, 1667. Uh, that brings us to the end of resolutions. We do have a late filed resolution. It's by uh, council member Glover and council member Hurt. Yes, thank you. I um, 
thank the sponsor for uh, presenting the resolution, but I respectfully ask that it be withdrawn and uh, with a brief explanation or a comment. All right, so um, in order to bring it up, in order to actually take action, we have to suspend the rules to get it in before us tonight. Okay. Because okay, it was late filed. So, um, Council Member Sledge? Okay. So, um, Council Member Hurt, do you feel comfortable explaining what the resolution does, or do you want me to turn to Mr. Jameson? Uh, and then we're going to have to take a motion to suspend the rules to get us in, get it in front of us. I'd, I'd let uh, Councilman, I mean, not Council, but Mr. Jameson make the uh, description, please. Mr. Jameson. Two, thing, uh, two things. The summary of the resolution is that this simply requests that the Metro Board of Education refrain from taking any action at their pending board meeting regarding Dr. Sean Joseph's employment contract pending the resolution by the State Board of Education as to their consideration of pending suspension, uh, suspension recommendations. Second thing is if the intent is to withdraw, the sponsor can just simply withdraw, period, and there not be a vote or uh, a, a two vote uh, requirement. All right. A suspension requirement, sorry. All right, so. She, she can simply say I withdraw and that'd be the end of it. So we don't have to suspend Correct. Rules. All right, so uh, if, does that make sense? Do you understand what you're doing? Yes. If you just, if you just withdraw, it's over. You we don't even take it up. So you're trying to tell me I don't need to say anything? Did you not? <laughs> has she not? Councilor Hurt, can I ask, have you signed on to the legislation? <laughs> Can't remember. All right, so uh, council member, we need to know if you've signed on to the legislation. I did and I didn't. I, I did and then, then I took it off. All right, so um, because you took it off, you can't handle the legislation at this point. So there is no one, uh, and council member is, Glover is gone. Not here. And there's, so, no, um, there's no sponsor present. So there's no sponsor present to move the legislation, so it just doesn't do anything. Yeah, it, it's dead. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna move on to um, bills on first reading. Uh, if there's no objection, we'll consider all ordinances on first reading in one vote at this time. Is there a motion to adopt? Okay, Council Member Mendes. I don't know whether you've moved on to the next um, bill or not, but Mr. Um, Swope is interested in signing on to that late filed. I couldn't get up here any faster. Wow, what a mess. But is it your intention to discuss this tonight? If we can get it Have into discussion tonight, yes. It's can already I been have to suspend the rules. Uh, you'd have to suspend the rules, but he has moved on. I, I'm not going to make the call, but I understood him to have moved on to first grade. So, um, Councilmember Swope, um, due to the fact that you were on crutches and you couldn't get up here to um, get up here to sign this thing, I'm going to go back. Uh, we have not taken up any measures yet on uh, first reading, uh, so I will uh, defer to you. Now, let me explain what we've got. We've got a late file resolution. It is now uh, signed by Council Member uh, Glover and Council Member Swope. It's a late file resolution. You've heard an explanation of what it does. Before we can consider anything, uh, the council member has to move to suspend the rules. Council member Swope. I would like to suspend the rules, please. All right, so there is a motion to suspend the rules. Is there, are there any objections? I see two objections, so uh, the rules are not suspended. So nice. thank you, Council Member Swope. I'm sorry you came all the way up here to sign that and on your crutches. All right. So now we're ready to move on to uh, bills on first reading. If there's no objection, we'll consider all ordinances on first reading in one vote at this time. Is there a motion to adopt? Got a motion to adopt. Properly seconded. Uh, all in favor of bills on first reading, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt on first reading. Thank you. Okay, we are now moving to bills on second reading. There you are. 
There you go. We'll begin with BL 2018-1388, sponsors Murphy, Bedney, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3964 Woodlawn Drive. Council Member Murphy, let me find you. Council Member Murphy is not here. Council Member O'Connell, at the ready. Thank you, Madam President. I was advised by the sponsor that she would like to defer second reading to the first meeting in July, and I will move to do just that. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of a deferral until July, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bill is deferred. Next is BL 2019-1543, sponsor O'Connell. This uh, is an ordinance to amend section 1112090 of the Metropolitan Code of Law to prohibit panhandling in certain locations. Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Committee reports. Council Member, who is public safety? Public I believe safety. that is uh, my arch rival over there in District 20. Council Member Roberts. Wow. Um, public safety voted four in favor, zero against, to defer by rule for two meetings per the sponsor. Okay. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move to defer two meetings. Two meetings. All in favor of two meeting deferral? Uh, hold on. We're checking for a quorum. Two minutes. We where's, do? Our, where's our quorum detector? Okay. <laughs> all right, I've been told we have a quorum. All those in favor of two meeting deferral? Aye. Any opposed? All right, bill is deferred. Next is BL 2019-1544, sponsors Vircher, Gilmore, and Allen. This is an ordinance to approve an affiliation agreement bind between Vanderbilt University and the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to provide student clinical instruction and training with Davidson County Drug Court. Council Member Vircher. Uh, thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval 1240 against, and I move for approval. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Council Member O'Connell, are you, are you in line for discussion on this? I, I am not. I, I think that's a hangover yeah, for other things. Okay. No discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019 1545, sponsors Mina Johnson, Vircher, and others. This is an ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Property Administration or his designee to accept, execute, and record a quick claim deed from the State of Tennessee, acting by and through the Commissioner of Transportation to the Department of Public Works of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County for a certain easement acquired by the state to complete a bridge, bridge rehabilitation project at Hillwood Boulevard Bridge over CSX Transportation Railroad Crossing in Richland Creek. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to request committee report, please. Okay, Council Member Vircher. Budget and Finance recommended approval 12 4 0 against. Council members, uh, hmm. Mina Johnson, could you? No, you can't give that report. Yes. Can you reach over and see what, what Council Member Murphy? You've got it. Okay, planning and zoning. And yeah, planning and zoning historical recommended for approval 10 4 0 against. Great. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works report. Uh, we voted seven in, or no, no, we had our two committee members, nine in favor, uh, zero against. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. I move for approval, please. Been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1546, sponsors Rosenberg, Vircher, and others. This is an ordinance approving and authorizing the Director of Public Property Administration or his designee to accept a donation of real property Located at zero more 10 mil. <laughs> Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Committee reports, please. Thank you. Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Budget and Finance recommended approval 12 4 0 against. Thank you. Parks, uh, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Parks, Library, and Arts considered 1546 and voted to approve 8 4 0 against. Thank you. Planning, is that Council Member Johnson? Yes, planning zoning historical uh, recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Move approval. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? 
Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1547, sponsor O'Connell and Bedney. This is an ordinance authorizing LC Sobro LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 723 2nd Avenue South. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to request committee reports, please. Okay, planning, Councilmember Johnson. Yes, uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 for zero against. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, Public Works voted nine in favor, zero against to recommend, and I would like to move approval. Okay, been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Bill's recommended. Next is BL 2019-1548, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This is an ordinance authorizing LC Sobro 1 LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments. That's why it's an ordinance in the right of way located at 703rd Avenue South. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Fans of BL 2019 1547 might recognize some familiarity uh, in we this bill. We could have taken those together. Yep. Uh, but uh, that said, I'd like to request committee reports. Okay. Councilmember um, Ina Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, planning zoning historical recommend for approval 10 4 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, thank you. Public Works recommended approval nine in favor, zero against, and I would like to recommend approval. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1549, sponsor Syracuse, Bedna, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing water main and sanitary sewer mains, a fire hydrant, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements, and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrants and easements for properties located at 2710 Old Lebanon Pike and 220 Cliffdale Road. Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Committee reports, please. Uh, thank you. Planning, Council Member Mina Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. We voted 9 in favor, 0 against. Thank you, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. The final easements for Donaldson Library. Move approval. All right. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Go Donaldson Library. Next is BL 2019-1550, sponsors Allen, Bedney, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer and water mains, a sanitary sewer manhole, a fire hydrant assembly and easements, and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for properties located along Belmont Boulevard, Bernard Avenue, and Compton Avenue. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we voted uh, in favor nine, four, zero against. Okay, and Council Member Mina Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Okay, and Councilmember O'Connell, if you could move this one for me. Oh, that would sure. be great. Uh, yes, I can. This was not on my list, but I can certainly do that. Let's move approval. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of BL 2019 1550, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Thank you for covering for me, Councilmember O'Connell. Next is BL 2019 1551, Councilmember Sledge, Bednay, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easements for property located at 1022 9th Avenue South. Councilmember Sledge. Uh, thank you, committee report. Councilmember Mina Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. We voted 9 in favor, 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Sledge. Move approval. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019 1552, Councilmember Van Rees, Bedney, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main, a sanitary sewer manhole, and easement, and to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and adjustment to an existing sanitary sewer manhole and easements for property located at 3711 Dickerson Pike. Councilmember Van Rees. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Johnson. Yes, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended, uh, 10 4 0 against. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. We voted nine uh, in favor, zero against. Councilmember Van Rees. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me on this, uh, <laughs> this vote. Thanks for staying in the room. So we have a quorum. Uh, I move approval. Thank you very much. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is Bill 2019-1553, sponsors Bedna and O'Connell, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main, a sanitary sewer manhole and easements, and to accept a new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 2995 Sidco Drive. Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to request committee reports. Okay, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Public Works voted uh, nine in favor, zero against, mm -hmm. and I would like to move approval with a brief comment. You go ahead. I think Councilmember Bedney is going to owe me uh, after this one, so we'll now I'd like it. to renew my motion. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1554, sponsors Murphy, Bedney, and O'Connell. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing water main and easement and to accept the relocation of a fire hydrant assembly, a new fire hydrant, and easement for property located at 4101 Charlotte Avenue. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam Everybody President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you. Public Works recommended nine in favor, zero against. And on behalf of the council lady from District 24, I would like to move approval. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019 1555, sponsors Roberts, Bedney, and O'Connell. Uh, this is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new water main fire hydrant assemblies and easements for property located at 833 Watt Circle. Council Member Roberts. Madam Pro Tem, committee reports, please. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Public Works recommended nine in favor, zero against. Although I'm looking at the room, we had not recognized who the lead sponsor was at that time. I don't know if we maybe we ought to move to reconsider. <laughs> I, I will. I guess I'll defer to lead sponsor and see what she wants to do here. We'll see lead sponsor, Council Member Roberts. I'm a big fan of uh, water mains, so I'm going to move for approval. Okay. Been moved and seconded, and all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is Bill 2019-1556, sponsor O'Connell and Bedney, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing water main and easement and to accept new water main and easement for property located at 900 Rosa L. Parks Boulevard. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 4 0 against. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Public Works recommended nine in favor, zero against, and I would like to move approval. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1557, sponsored O'Connell and Bedney. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing easement rights for former alley number 120, located at 821 Palmer Place. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Thank you Madam President. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Public Works recommended nine in favor, zero against, and though abandoning rights for a former alley sounds cruel, I'd like to move <laughs> approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1558, sponsors Bedney, O'Connell, and Hagar. This is an ordinance to amend the geographic information street system and alley center line layer for the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning portions of alley number 1863 right of way. Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you. I, I don't, I'm happy to do this one. I didn't know if Council Member Hagar might like to lead this one. Council just for, Member Hagar, just for would you different. like to do the honors? Thank you so much. Committee reports. <laughs> Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. I'd be happy to give uh, Council Member Hagar a committee report. Uh, planning zoning historical recommended for approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Thank you. Public Works, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Public Works recommended nine in favor, zero against. Thank you. Traffic, parking, and transportation, Council Member Hagar. Traffic and parking recommended three, four, zero against. And do you move approval? Move for approval. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Now we're on bills on third reading. Take it away. 
right. All right, bills on third reading. We're on BL 2019-1464 by Council Member Scott Davis and Council Member Anthony Davis. Uh, this was disapproved by the Planning Commission 6-0 on 2-28-2019. <coughs> Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from SPR to RM15A. Zoning for property located at 1218 Montgomery Avenue at the southwest corner of Douglas Avenue and Montgomery Avenue, 0.20 acres. Uh, Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The sponsor asked me to move deferral for one meeting of this bill, please, right. sir. So I got a motion to defer one meeting properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, opposed no. You defer one meeting. We're on BL 2019-1472 as amended by Council Members Bedney, Sledge, and Cooper. Um, this was approved with an amendment by the Ad Hoc Affordable Housing Committee and disapproved by the Budget and Finance Committee. No recommendation from personnel. Ordinance to amend Section 2.210.020 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to require an appropriation of the Barnes Fund for affordable housing equal to future economic and community development incentive grant payments. Council Member Sledge, you've got this one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With the lead sponsor out, I'll move for one meeting deferral, please. All right, so I got a motion to defer one meeting properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, it is deferred one meeting. Uh, BL 2019-1525 by Council Members Virtue and Hall. Ordinance amending section 4.12.010 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to the definition of competitive bidding in accordance with Title 12, Chapter 3, Part 12 of the Tennessee Code annotated. Council Member Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move for approval. All right, so I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. BL 2019-1528 by Council Members O'Connell, Wiener, and Hurt. Ordinance to provide for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period beginning at midnight, 12 o'clock a.m. on April 24, 2019, ending at 8 o'clock a.m. On April 28, 2019, relative to the use of these areas in conjunction with the 2019 National Football League draft and related activities and events, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. So I have a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, BL 2019-1542 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance authorizing 151 Nashville LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right of way located at 151 First Avenue South. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. All reports are in. Motion to approve. Properly seconded. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. We are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.